Jazz hands have to be going. Jazz hands are going. We're live. We're live. Welcome back to episode 75. Yes, I believe this is something like our Diamond Jubilee, Curtis. I believe. Really? 70, isn't 70, 75 is like a special anniversary number, right? I don't know anything so, about that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, okay, we're, we're making it into a special thing. This is episode... Woman... Can you mute your your computer for crying out loud? Okay, <laughs> Lola is already messing it up. Lola is already messing it up. Okay, cool. All right, we're live. This is episode seventy five of the Who Moved My Freedom podcast, live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. Welcome to all. Our special guest today is this bearded gentleman right there. Check that out. Look at mm -hmm. that. He's. Yep. You know what? Um, this is VSO, by the way. There you go. So That's for. Me. for People who don't know VSO, what was it? Uh, something weird. You very, very shitty operator. Okay, very, very shitty operator. Right. <laughs> See, for some reason, the reason the vigilant specter operation sticks in my brain, but no, I like the very shitty operator. That's, that's cool. what it used to be. Um, you know, we were just kind of we were being goofy at the time, so we decided to make it even more goofy. Yeah. Uh, uh, because everybody is like everybody at the time was like. Oh, I'm Raven, blah 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 blah, and I, you know, trying to be all badass and stuff. So we're kind yeah. of making fun of him. So, you, do you think Raven is badass? Just no. no. Oh, you, oh, damn it! No, so. damn it! No, that's my son's name. Oh, is it really? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know. Yeah, that's like you know, I don't. That's like one of his names. He's got a bunch of names. Well, I so, uh, I wish, thinks, my, huh? I wish my parents. I wish my parents would have named me Raven. echoing. Uh. Is VSO echoing? I don't think so. That's what Tyva says on their oh. end. He's echoing. Oh, on I guess on on Tyvin's end, you're echoing. So shout out to Tyvin. I don't know. I don't hear it on my end. So okay, we'll we'll go forward with this a little bit. We'll see if it's still doing it. Um, let me before we get deep into any kind of conversations here. Let me say what's up to everyone hanging out in the chat. VSO, you know how to get into the chat, right? Uh, actually, I thought that the blue thing at the top got me in the chat, but it doesn't. No, that's the chat between me and you. That's our secret chat where yeah. we get to talk about like people in the actual chat and you know all kinds of other secret things <laughs> that no one sees. But there's like an actual chat which, um, in the links I sent you, there is a YouTube link. So if you click on that, and then you, I don't know if you might have that open. That maybe that's why there's some echo, but. If you have that open, mute the actual video, but if you scroll down to the bottom on the side, you'll see there's a chat going on there, and you could jump in and talk to folks. Um, I want to shout out Archangel. He was number one today, so he won the race. You know, the prize is you're number one, Archangel, so congratulations to you. Peter Hinkle also in the chat. What's up? Benjamin Martlett. Marlette actually Marlette is in the chat shut up and play your guitar DC2 mega boost Chris Bullis also in the chat let's see Chris B also in the chat Donald Dickens what up Donald Dickens uh, let's see who else I'm scrolling at because there's like lots of conversations the Tyvan show is in the chat he's hearing he's hearing echoes if anyone else is hearing echoes on VSL's part let us know I don't know how they would because I've got all my stuff turned off. Yeah, and it sounds perfectly fine to me. So I'm not. Are, you, are they? Are people still hearing echoes, Lola? Okay, I don't know. I don't know whether or not. Okay, so there you go, Lead Devil, in the chat. What's up? I'm gonna get to some of your comments. If I'm missing you, just get um, you know, do roll call, and I will shout you out. The Tyvin Show, by the way, says he's asking us all to pray for his grandpa. Um, he says he will not be with us much longer. Maybe a day, day and a half. He's a World War II veteran, and he was a boat commander that dropped off the troops. So, so he so, was a badass, is what he is. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry to hear that, Tyvin Show, and yeah, you know, prayers are being sent out to to him. You know, thanking him for his service and all the things that I'm sure he's done in your life. And uh, you know, you should also let him know that we forgive him for. You know, bringing a grandson like you into the world, you big knucklehead. Sorry, I had to, <laughs> I had to like give some digs to the Tyvin show. I couldn't, you know, go all soppy on that one. So anyway, you know, sorry to hear that Tyvin show. So let's see who else is out here. Um, I'm scrolling down, seeing 
who else is in the chat? Did you get into the chat yet, by the way? Uh, it looks like I did. Yeah, there's like a just like scrolls of Liberty Life. I'm looking to see who's new in here. Josh Veer, Freedom Work, Tango Hunter, Scott Nichols, Serving Christ. What's up? So Ron? I figured out. So yeah, go ahead. hang on a second. I think I figured out why I'm echoing. Why? Right. I'm in an open room, and because oh. I've got I've got my headphones on. So I'm yelling at the top of my lungs. My throat already hurts. So oh. can everybody hear me in the chat? Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know if the folks, can you guys hear him in the chat? Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So I'm going to try right. not to, I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to yell because yeah. Alyssa just po poked her head in. It's like, will you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> that's his, you know, that's his uh, fiance. There you go. He's, you're in it. You do sound like you're in an empty room. You don't, did you, you guys just moved, right? Yeah, this is going to be the new office. So, well, actually, the new office is going to be over there, but uh, I'm waiting on my contractor to finish a few things. Yeah, so. so you don't have enough books or enough ammo or enough guns or something in there to change the acoustics yet. You don't even no. have blinds on your window for crying no. the hell out loud. Nope. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Not there yet. You no. know what would be awesome and creepy at the same time? If, if like, the, uh, the clown from It... Just showed up in your window, dude. <laughs> that no joke. I would. I have a toy here for that. Yeah. But I think you I get I, smoked. <laughs> I think I found a way to decrease the acoustics. So inside of these boxes, we have these things. And I bet you, if you stack those on the wall, they'll do some destructive interference type stuff. So I just need to glue these to the wall. And uh, I shoot. Uh, I shoot right. enough. Go I ahead. shoot. I shoot enough of them that I should be able to cover the wall in a few months, right? <laughs> um, the way that you shoot probably in a couple of days, but I think you should check with Alyssa first before you do that. <laughs> probably. That, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. Yeah. You know, that is, I have done that kind of stuff. I, uh, I bought a bunch of this like purple foam one time and stuck it up on the walls in my studio. <laughs> and Lola was not happy about that. No, so. Yeah, you, you you know think about that. Okay, I want to shout out R Hendry who just donated twenty five bucks to us. What's up, R Hendry, giving us the twenty five bucks? That's awesome. That I appreciate awesome. it. You know, yeah, yeah. That's Robbie. That's right. Lola wants to know if I remember Robbie. He's he's been here. He's hung out with me actually here in the studio and all that kind of stuff. It's good dude. I don't know if he 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 used to work for Walmart. I don't know if he's still working for Walmart or what he's up to. So thank you very much, R. Hendry. We appreciate that. Um, uh, let me shout out to I Carry My Revolver in Single Action. There's like some longer and longer names going in here. That's the whole, the whole name of that dude. Uh, Ron Van Fossen, <laughs> Josh Veer. <laughs> there's, there's a whole blood, bunch. Excuse me. Uh, Blazing 2012, C. Pulliam, uh, Dead Enders, B. Souza, Tony Kentrell. We got a lot of people in the chat. Okay, I'm going to come back. Jackson Oldman, what's up? Uh, Mark Dunavent. So there you go. If I missed anyone, just do a roll call and I'll shout you out as we go on here. And um, I also want to take the opportunity to thank everyone. Like, we're, you know, Robbie just donated 25 bucks to us. We have Patreons out there that help keeping us going with everything that's going on here. I want to thank the Patreons. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. Um, do you have a Patreon account? I think so. Oh, we do? Yeah. It's, um, uh, what is it? Yeah, it's BSO Gun Channel. That's where we run all of our um, all of our giveaways and stuff. And we also run some like exclusive content, stuff like that over there. So uh, like all those people just saw the new range mod that, uh, that I did. So. Right. Oh, okay, yes, because I remember last time you had some special things like, um, you know, Curtis actually takes time, gives special things to the folks out there that support him on Patreon. We're doing that as well. I know Lola's adding some new, f like, features to the Patreon. I think she's adding something on there. Did you did you add new stuff yet, Lola? Like, is there the thing, if someone gives $100 a month, they get to go on a date with me? Something like that. Something like I'm that. Okay, on there it. you go. No tongue. Uh, I, I will have it you for can, the weekend. You can, you can uh, fondle me a little bit, <laughs> but not like, what's the name of that big muscle guy that was, it, that was Terry in? Terry Lewis. Yeah, yeah, not like Terry Crews. Terry Crews. I don't want to be fondled like Terry. I don't know if you heard about this, Curtis. 
No, I did not hear about this. Do you know? <laughs> okay, this is this is to, this has nothing to do with guns or nothing to do with gun control, the NRA or whatever. But whatever, you know. Um, Terry Crews, you know, that's that big. That's, he's a black guy, really big. He has all the muscles. And he's always like flexing. What, what, what do you call the muscles over here and the, the, pectorals. the pec pectorials or whatever? Yeah. So you know, with all this, with huh? Was he in Expendables? I, I think he, he might have been in Expendables. Yeah. He was. He was the. Uh, he also played Cheeseburger Eddie in uh, Longest Yard. He's in a lot of stuff, man. He was in Idiocracy. He's been in a lot of movies at this point. So apparently with everything going on in Hollywood, and I'm going to come back to the Patreons, but this does have a link to it. With everything going on in Hollywood with uh, Harvey Weinstein, Terry Crews came out and said that he has also been sexually assaulted. No joke. I'm not kidding. It's not a joke. You're not laughing. Well, you sound like was, you... What? Sorry, I was, I, was, I was typing in the chat. I, I can't, I can't you won't listen. You didn't hear what no, I, I heard. What you said, but I was like, I can only like do exactly one thing. As I can listen, right? But, but no, I mean, I mean, as far as like, I, I suppose like of all of the black men in the world, I would probably sexually assault Terry Crews first. <laughs> okay, I'm, personally, I'm glad of that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean what do you want me to say? Right? <laughs> hey, I'm I'm happy that you didn't say me. <laughs> but um, it's weird. He said this happened like right in front of his wife that some, some dude came up, some like big Hollywood power dude came up and just like felt up his junk and did all kinds of craziness to him. And it just Yikes. it just goes to sh like I know I used to dabble in the hip hop world and I know that goes down. I know that. So um, it's one of the reasons why I don't do anything in the hip hop world anymore. So, you know. When you hear dudes like Eminem talking a lot of crap, you know, you should consider some of these things. Like you don't really have to go to prison <laughs> to deal with that kind of stuff. I know that's why like lots of folks are afraid of going to prison. But anyway, to get back to the Patreon thing, we appreciate everyone that supports us on Patreon. It's kind of like crazy out there because, for example, since now we're talking about gun control and obviously we're anti-gun control, YouTube is going through and demonetizing every single one of my videos that is um, rallying us against gun control, just so that you guys know that. So it's happening. I think Lola's going to post up some stuff about that. It's definitely going down. I, what kind of um, things have you been running into with YouTube and demonetization and all that? So um, for those people, nothing has actually befallen our channel yet. We actually saw this coming. So um, um, to preface that, um, I'm not sure if everybody heard about this, but several channels have gotten strikes against them for having uh, videos of slide fire stocks being used on the right. chain yeah so, and, and strikes like you only get so many strikes before youtube deletes your channel right yeah you only get so many strikes but the most important part is um but for the most part you know us channels pretty much play by the rules um we don't really do a whole lot of like bad stuff because we're good people right um but so we don't get strikes but the thing about your first strike is you are suspended from live video for three months. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. I think I heard that, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. So that's a big deal. And the reason that's a big deal is that then decreases our ability to, um, to be on top of things and get stuff information out very quickly to our viewers uh, via the live video feed. Cause we don't have that capability anymore. So that's yeah. why it's also really important that you follow all your favorite gun channels on things like Instagram and Facebook and all that sort of stuff, because uh, that stuff's at least somewhat disconnected. So like if they take the live video away from us on YouTube, then I can pop on Facebook and do one or I can yeah. pop on Instagram and do one. Right. Yeah. So. Or, you know, like some of us have full 30, um, you know, not, Wait, I know not. Huh? Full full thirty doesn't have live capability, does it? No, it did, no. It's been very limited in what it could do, you know, um, for lots of different reasons. But that not everyone's on there either, so right. I understand that. You know, um, the so the thing I was gonna say is that um, 
I, this kind of like leads me to something else. But first thing I want to do, I want to remind everyone because I forgot about this. I want to remind everyone to click that thumbs up button and then also share this video with your family and friends on social media. Make sure you're subscribed to me. Also check out BSO. You can just search on YouTube BSO and you and make sure you're subscribed to BSO. Okay. Thanks guys. Yeah. Um, you know, and we definitely need those thumbs up. Come on, click the thumbs up and get it going. I want to, you know, I want to see this all get revved up. So the thing, and, and believe you me, the last time uh, Curtis was here, we were just like bouncing around talking about a lot of stuff. Yeah, we were. So I, I think we're probably going to do the same thing today. Probably. Um, and with this whole gun control thing going on and then us pushing back against it, and of course, all these social media outlets pushing back against us, because even if you're on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, which we all are, those places, uh, in, including Patreon, these places are also social justice warriors, and they're also for gun control, the people that own these places. So the, the, the reason why I'm talking about all that is I really believe, I've been saying it for a while, and then I'm trying to do stuff with it, is that we need to create our own platform that serves not just us as gun guys, but people who think and believe the same way that we do. Because I think lots of people are suffering, not just us specifically as gun people. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's um, one of the reasons I was so excited to be invited to do uh, Full 30 because it's run by gun people only and it's for gun people. Um, it, and the, the biggest problem is that all these social networks are so large and so easily reachable as far as like bulk of people are concerned. So it's hard to replicate that and it's going to take a lot of time. So I know that some people say things about full 30, like I wish they had an app and you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, well, I mean, that stuff is coming. It just takes a lot of time to put it in place. Think how long it's taken YouTube to become what it is today. Yeah. And I think they have a, um, you know, I think they have an app on Android. I don't have Android. I'm an iPhone guy. I think that Apple's blocked them on the iPhone app several times. So, you know, that that's the kind of uphill battle that, that they're facing here. And yeah, they're not able to put everyone on there. They can't put all of the gun guys on there. And if we probably like flooded that thing and put all our libraries of videos up there, I don't think they would fully be able to ha to handle that right now either. Yeah, that's what a lot of people don't realize is the amount of like every video that I produce is at least a gig and a half, usually. I mean, unless it's really mm -hmm. short, right? Yeah. So times that by, or excuse me, multiply that by, um, you know, 20 creators, 30 creators or something like that. I mean, times, that's a lot. times yeah. two videos a week for yeah. perpetuity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of data. It's so, a lot. Yeah. I mean, I do this Monday to Friday <laughs> for like two, three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I edited yeah. four four videos today, so yeah, um, yeah. It gets intensive, but I think that we do need to. In all of this, like our voices could be quickly silenced. That's what I'm trying to say. We are gonna. I am gonna get to the gun control stuff, but we like what you have to be careful with here is our voices can be very, very quickly silenced if we're not able to reach you guys through YouTube or even Facebook and all these kinds of things. And as we push back against them. Don't think that they won't start pushing more of this against us. I mean, that's what you see YouTube doing, you know. They kind of like eased off from demonetizing my videos, but the minute all of this came up, I don't have uh, bump fire videos on my channel because I've tried it before. I'm not particularly a fan of it. That doesn't mean I, su I support its right to exist, just like I do a lot of other gun stuff. As far as I'm concerned, we should all have machine guns. Uh, yeah. I'm the kind of guy and I... You know, actually, I, I did some videos where some people misconstrued it that I'm like pro gun control somehow. I have no idea how they <laughs> got there. Yeah, I don't know how they got there. Um, I think they were just trying to defame me. Um, but like, and I, my response to that person, I published this on our on our channel on in the comments. I'm the dude who thinks that you should be anybody over the age of say 12 should be able to walk into CVS and buy a rocket repel grenade launcher and blow on the Amen. same t same ticket, no <laughs> questions asked. Right? Yeah. And yeah. like, that's just the way it is. Like, um, yeah. and I actually said 12 might be a little bit old um, because <laughs> if, you're, if you're old enough to make a life, you're old enough to take one. So right. 
Yeah, you know, I'm pretty much with you on that in principle. You know, I think that all these things are infringements on our freedom, you know. Now, at the same time, so that's my that's my ideal view that this is the way it should be, right? But I also deal in a lot of NFA stuff. Um, specifically, I'm a Silencer Shop Pro staffer, so I do a lot of Silencer stuff. So I play with the NFA stuff a lot. And um, the, uh, the problem, the disconnect there is that you have to have also a realistic worldview too, that you have to be able to work within the system to try to change it. So just up until a month ago, or excuse me, just up until about a week and a half ago, we were trying to get silencers off the registry. Like that was a real thing. And we we're trying yeah. to get national reciprocity for concealed carry and stuff like that. Um, now we're kind of like trying to keep the stuff that we got. So um, being politically active is obviously really, really important. And I think that sometimes political speech to that effect can be misconstrued to mean certain things that, you know, I don't mean. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what people are talking about. I don't I know I've never seen anything from you that would lead me in the direction of thinking that you're anti-gun. But, you know, people, I guess, could take things and twist it. it can happen to any of us. And I'm sure it has. So <laughs> now hey, uh, go ahead. I, I don't know. I don't I don't know what where it came from. I it's probably a bunch of hate that um because of some of my associations in the industry um, mm -hmm. aren't exactly popular people. Right. Um, so that could be something to do with it. Right. I don't really care. They're hate. I, I, um, I'll put it off Star Wars reference since the new trailer just came out, right? <laughs> Your hate only makes me stronger. <laughs> I guess that's going to be a t-shirt soon. I was going to say to you, very shitty operator should already be a t-shirt. What the hell is up with that, man? Dude, Do you have these t-shirts. Do you have a t-shirt guy? I don't. Okay. I don't. So I have a t-shirt guy. It's called uh, Forge from Freedom. See this? Look, check out my t-shirt. Right. Well, this one, I didn't design this one. I'm going to lock it and everything, but this is in my collection. It says I'm pro-choice. Oh man, I need that. Then I it's got a that. bunch of guns there and it's uh, forged from freedom. So I think you should get, I'm going to, I thought I gave it to you the last time, but Lola, can you send him the info for the folks from forge from freedom? Sure. Okay. So Lola's going to send you some info because they're good guys. They're gun guys and they can totally set you up and, um, tell them how strange sent you. Yes, tell them that Hank Strange sent you and all that kind of good stuff. But you can cool. just come up with your ideas, talk to them about your ideas. They'll help you develop it, make it into T-shirts. People go there, buy it. They send the T-shirts out to them, and it's good quality stuff. So Good, good. Um, yeah, Mil Mac from Military Arms Channel is using them, Guns and Gear. There's a whole bunch of different people. Cool, because did, did you see the new shirt that him and uh, Gun Channels designed? Um, is that the one, the YouTube thing? Yes. Yes, I did see that. That was yes. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's Forge from Freedom. So you should definitely, definitely get up on that, man. Because yeah, <laughs> sounds sounds good. Because I need one of those like monetized yeah. only shirts. Like I need that. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So we all need to do that. So let's get into the. You know, I'm going to remind everyone again to click the thumbs up and share this video. All that kind of stuff. I don't. I don't know if you got a chance to share it. Um, uh, Lola, I, I think put some stuff out there. I did. So okay, cool. So everyone out there, click thumbs up, share video. I know it seems repetitive, but you know, this is one of the things that we have to do. So we're here really to talk about this whole gun control thing. And I think the best thing for us to do, Curtis, is kind of do like a timeline. I know you did a video, I think like like 20 hours ago, 24 hours ago. Yeah, I did. I published it yesterday, right about this time. I, okay. uh, I woke up and I like rolled out of bed and I like, got my car to go to the gym and like I was kind of operating a smartphone while driving a car. I know that you're not supposed to do that, but I basically saw the headlines of, um, of the gun control stuff. So I started reading up on it. And then I got a couple phone calls almost immediately. And I'm like, crap, I can't go to the gym today. I have to go like 
go figure this out. So I went and figured it out and did a bunch you, of research. You don't have a way to do this while you're at the gym on the treadmill or something? Uh, I, one, a treadmill is, should never be used. I don't understand why you, <laughs> why you would transport yourself to the gym to get on a thing that transports you without moving, right? Like, I don't know why. I don't so, know why you would do that. Um, I'm guessing you just go to the gym to lift the irons. <laughs> yeah, the iron only, right? <laughs> um, uh-huh. um, but so, I mean, I, I will admit I did do a couple sets of bench press while I was there, but uh, then I promptly left to go film, and I went to the range and filmed, and then I spent the rest of the time editing the video, and I got it up instant. Like normally, I schedule my videos. This one was published immediately, mm-hmm. right? Type mm-hmm. thing. So. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so, th- so you, but you've been tracking it, right? Because you knew that obviously I was talking about this last night. I think that this thing happened in Las Vegas. Then the media was putting pressure on Trump. Trump said, Oh, we're going to look into this. Right. In terms of the media was saying, are you going to do something about gun control? He said, we're going to look into this. Right. That was his answer. Then the NRA came out and said that they think that the like the ATF needs to take a closer look and they don't think people should um, modify their firearms, specifically rifles and the rate of fire and all that. And and um, and there was a lot going on there. That whole situation itself is a whole like shitball, to be honest with you. Because everyone has a different opinion of what went down with the NRA. Some people think they're playing like 3D next level interdimensional chess or something of what they came out with and said. And I think they were trying to do that. And then some of us think that they what they said was really fucked up and they really didn't get it right. And they would have been better off not saying anything. And then the next thing, and I think maybe they were saying that because they could see that these Republicans in Congress were going to put something, were going to put forward forms of gun control, right? And they were trying to cut that off. So So let me, let me ask you a question Mm -hmm. just to qualify this um, before I give my perspective. Um, What time or when did the NRA make that statement? You know, this, um, I'm trying to think of when this was, um, the NRA made this statement. What's today? Today's Thursday. Right. So they did this back, I'm going to say like Thursday. Okay. Something like Thursday in my mind. All right. Well, if it was third. Okay. Yeah. So I received either, either Wednesday or Thursday, but go ahead. I received notification mm-hmm. um, from my source at, uh, at 4 56 PM on Friday, last Friday. Um, that there was a really bad gun control bill coming down um, at the time. Um, It had already been written. It was ready to go. Um, And it was going to drop sometime this week. So Mm -hmm. I didn't, we didn't know when it was and we didn't, he didn't even have all of the details at the time. He just told me to be on the lookout for it, that it was coming. So um, again, I didn't hear about the NRA thing uh, until you know, late. Um, I did I, again. I didn't know when it happened, but I didn't hear about it until Saturday morning. Um, oh, okay. So, so you you heard about it. So you heard about the NRA thing first, or the gun control thing first? I I heard about the gun control thing on Friday. Oh, Friday at, on Friday at four fifty six p.m. I was driving to Georgia. Okay. Um, and the reason I didn't hear about the NRA thing. Uh, their statement or anything is because uh, we got to Georgia. We were pretty exhausted. We went out and got dinner and then we promptly went to bed because we had to get up early the next morning. Yeah. Um, Cause you were just on, you guys were just on the road driving. Yeah. yeah we drove for nine hours that day. So um, we went and got, you know, got that. And we went to bed and then the next morning I woke up and read it. And I'm like, Oh shit. Yeah. So, uh, well, and everybody was talking about it. Of course, everybody was all about it. You know, when we got to, um, um, when we got to the, to the IV eight, 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 eight shoot. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, that wasn't a skip. That was a perfect. Um, yeah. So, so yes, I don't, I, mm-hmm. now, now my opinion is, or go ahead. No, you were going to say something before. No, I, I was going to say, I was just going to um, say that I think that we can, 
you know, we can all debate when things are coming out, but I do think that the NRA probably <laughs> knew something that we didn't know, and most likely what they knew that they were Republicans. It's not Democrats, right? Because we all know liberals, Democrats, they've got this stuff preloaded. Right. They've got bills they'd like to put out there preloaded. I think what they knew, and they've probably known for a long time, I don't think they just found this out. I think they've known for a while that there's lots of Republicans in Congress that would like to put forward some kind of gun control, but they've had them tamped down for a while. But everything that was happening was kind of giving these guys cover. So you had this thing in Las Vegas, then you had the media pushing the president. The president came out and said, you know, we're going to take a look at this. And then the next thing, and then NRA maybe was trying to get in front of it. I'm not trying to say they're not because I think they fund these guys, right? They're the ones that gave money to these Republicans, in part at least, to, to be in office and then told us, oh, these are these guys are good Republicans, they're pro-gun, and this is their rating and all that. So Right. It's no doubt that the NRA buys influence in Congress. Like, come on, that's, that's just, just like a lot of the special interests that buy – influence on the other side of the absolutely uh, like yes. it's just one of our special interest groups so you have to you have to understand that it, the street goes both ways um, yeah now my opinion is that i believe based on the timeline that i have here um and uh and this is just me i believe that the nra what they were trying to do was duplicate what duplicate the result of the atf Mm -hmm. I send it back to the ATF, let them say again that these are comply with the law and it's all good, right? Mm -hmm. And then at that point in time, the AT they this comes down, the ATF's like, and everybody's like, oh, well, the ATF says that they're they're cool. All right, let's go. Let's move on, right? Right. Now, where I think that they miscalculated is that when you are the NRA and you make a statement like that, you can... Um, unintentionally signal people that this sort of activity is okay. So they say, yeah, you know, maybe we ought to look at this, hoping that the um, the ATF is going to say, yeah, that's what we said the last three times you sent it here. Um, so why would it be any different the fourth time? Uh, but in doing so, they basically put the blood in the water and now it's a shit show. Right. I mean, I think, okay, so the first part of it, for them to come out and say, okay, the ATF already took, I think, and if you go back to their statement, which I could pull it up, I don't know if you read the statement that they published on the NRA ILA. I, I did, and I don't agree with everything in that statement. I think right. they royally screwed up that statement. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's what the media jumped on, because they came out and they said that, look, um, twice under the Obama administration, the ATF took a look at this and said this was okay, right? But they didn't leave it there. You know, they said, well, what we feel, we feel like, you know, people shouldn't modify their rifles, you know, and that the ATF should go back in there and, and, and somehow regulate this thing, but that we also don't feel that people should, um, you know, modify the rate of fire of their rifles. That's what they said in there. And so the media took that and just pounced on it. And they should know that. I mean, they've got, you know, they've got 5 million people giving them money. They're spending the money. It's not just for them to fly around on jets and stuff like that and limos and have a good time. I think it's, you know, they, they're supposed to have consultants, but I don't think the people who are consulting them are really connected. And this happens a lot, right? This is kind of like what happened with Rock River and Springfield Armory that they're not fully connected to on the ground with what's going on with real gun guys like us. So they put this extra stuff in there. The media jumped on that and, and put out headlines, NRA supports regulations. I 100% I agree with you that um, uh, I think that this was a, for lack of a better way to put it, this is a major league screw up. Um, on their part, we've seen this sort of stuff before. The last time I was on the show, we talked about this about how the whole gear, the whole carry guard situation, where they right, yeah, royally screwed up several things they put out with carry guard. Um, the term I would use, and I know this is used a lot, is out of touch. Mm -hmm. And they really need the NRA, that is, to start paying attention to people who are on the ground doing this sort of stuff. People like you and 
Tim from the Military Arms Channel, and uh, I'm not going to name myself, right? Even though I said I would do I think, stuff. I think I think they should. I think they should because you know what's one of the things I think that's dangerous, and I've been talking about this for the last several days. I don't know if you and I have ever spoken about this in the past because we've we've known each other in this YouTube thing for years. But I remember going back like maybe four or five shot shows ago that. When I that was my first shot show, and there were all these writers on a bus going out to media day, and they were fascinated by the fact that I was a YouTube guy, right? And so they were asking me all these questions. So I got to know them, right? They were trying to figure out about this whole YouTube thing and why we were sucking the oxygen out of the room for them. But the next day, there was a meeting really early that the NRA was having out there at shot show with these writers, but we, but the YouTube people were not, um, I know I wasn't invited. There might have been some YouTube people there. So I asked the guy the next day, like, what the hell was that meeting about? And he said they were trying to figure out how to control you guys, talking about us as YouTubers. And they were trying oh, yeah. to, like the NRA was trying to figure out how to control us, that they were worried that we were getting way too much attention and that they, you know, the message could get lost and that they can't necessarily control that. And if you remember, a couple months after that, we all of a sudden had like Coleon Noir and a whole bunch of other people or an NRA TV and all of that. I'm not knocking those people for that. I think that's awesome and, and, and I'm happy for their success in the NRA coming along and uh, putting them out there. But that was the NRA's attempt to tamp down our voices. Right. And yeah, I think they, that's they, that's what the problem is still. Oh, yeah. They, they definitely bought some some things up. Um, um, I mean, I mean, what are you going to say? I mean, we know that it goes on. And do you fault those people for for? No, I absolutely don't. No. Do you? Yeah. I mean, do you think that's wrong? Because I don't No, I mean, yeah, I, I, what, I don't go ahead. I'm what, sorry. What we do has value to people. I mean, you can see it. I mean, look at all the people who are in the chat right now. I mean, that are just going crazy, right? How many, how many, uh, um, I'm not going to name any names, but how do you, how many of those people would sit there and do the same thing for an article that was written in some magazine somewhere, right? Like that's yeah. just, it's it, the interactive nature of this. People value what we're doing. And if the NRA really wants to get ahead of sort of this sort of stuff, they need to be talking to this type of, of audience yeah i think it's tough you know i i think it's really tough and um i was trying to bring this up yesterday and everyone was laughing at me i think but i was bringing up michael jackson right if you're michael jackson and you're super famous and you have all the money and you have employees it's very difficult for your employees to tell you that you're doing some wrong shit because you're the boss and you have the money and you're the one with all the fame and everyone wants to hang out with you and be nice to you. It's very rare that you find employees that would say to their boss, you know what, that's fucked up what you're doing. You should stop that. You should roll that back. Hey, let me let me show you why this is wrong. There's, there's not a lot of people that can really talk to someone that's their boss that way. And I think that's evidenced by the fact that you can see I'm not saying all, I'm not trying to accuse anyone of anything, but you, you can see it for yourself that there's lots of people that are directly associated by, with the NRA in some kind of financial way, and they're just taking their side. They're not getting out there and saying, this is batshit crazy, these, you know, these guys fucked up, and they're not trying to tell them that they fucked up and make them back off of it. I tell you what, the NRA can start sending me a check every month, right? And I pr promise, that I will give them the skinny on everything that they're trying to do, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and I will totally do that. Like, no problem. I already offered to do it for them, right? And I but you're, but, you're, but, you're, but you're, your premise here is that they want to hear it. It has to start with that person saying, no, we want people who talk back to us, people who tell us when we're doing. I think there's some companies, there's some people that operate that way. And even though the gun world is kind of archaic, I think there's some people in the gun world that operate that way. And that's why their businesses are successful, even when, you know, they're going through all this kind of turmoil. But the NRA, I don't think they operate this way. Uh, I think that you're 100% correct about that. I don't think that they, um, I'm not going to say that they're, that they're so uh, bourgeois that they, um, that they think that way, that they are the NRA and they know all. Right. I think that they kind of have their what they believe to be their secret sauce, even though it's not working. Um, yeah. You know, but and they don't think that they need to do this. Um, 
that they need that sort of stuff because um, it's just like a lot of uh, law enforcement agencies. You know, they say they don't need help training and they know how to train their people, but yet you have all the instances where you see that people obviously either not trained or not well behaved. Yeah, one of the or two. Not professional. Yeah. Yeah, unprofessional. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think just to just to go down this a little further. What happened to me is like I saw, for example, I saw folks coming out and saying, man, the NRA are geniuses. <laughs> They're playing this next level shit. This is over you guys' heads. You're getting mad for nothing. And what, what, where, what I was mad about is the statement that they were making about the modification of rifles. Yep. Because, not, I mean, that, that makes us all criminals, okay? And that is also the major part of the industry right now that's still on fire. All these other guys made AR-15s thinking that they were, you know, they had the Hillary plan. They're going to sell every AR-15 they made and then maybe, like, take the money and go to, to Tahiti or something like that. And, and they were just going to sell every AR-15. And people aren't buying them. What people are buying are accessories, and what folks are doing are modifying their rifles, you know? So they didn't see that. And, and what the hell is wrong with modifying it, right? And, and so they just jumped on that and everyone was, so when people were going out there and defending them and not saying, okay, they're trying to say that the, that the ATF approved this. Well, that's a simple thing. Anyone could have said that. Any, any of these politicians could have said, this thing is totally legal and it would make no difference if we made it illegal right 100 percent. and that's kind of the whole premise of the video that i published yesterday that i think is very important that people go watch not just because they need your views um but mm -hmm. because um i think it's really important i basically take my ar and break it down on how uh, from two different perspectives how the literal person who knows um exactly what they're talking about that happens to be a liberal anti-gunner and then the uh, liberal anti-gunner that doesn't actually know anything and is in charge of doing this sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, you know, but we've, you we've also got Republicans that don't know anything. I think that's the problem. I think Paul Ryan was immediate, like, you know, they immediately pulled reciprocity off the table. What the hell does this incident that happen? Or, or I'm sorry, not reciprocity. They didn't have that on the table. Um, suppressors, right? Yeah. The say the, uh, is it the safe act? Yeah. Yeah, um, they immediately so, pull that off the table. What the hell does this have to do with that? So actually, let me um, let me back up and correct my lingo a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, not l uh, liberal. Let's use progressive instead, mm -hmm. because Paul okay. Ryan is a progressive. He's a okay. conservative True. progressive. Right. But um, that's just the way he I mean, he doesn't really think that we should have that stuff either. Yeah, and exactly. And I think like when this happened, uh, Nancy Pelosi said that, see, these guys want suppressors. And if this guy had suppressors, he would have done way more damage. The problem is, is that <laughs> a suppressor would have not stopped you from knowing where this guy was at. No. You know, and there's, um, I forgot the name of the company. Um, I think there were some companies that did like real world testing of this going up at a height with a suppressor and all that, you would have still known where this is coming from. It's not the movies, and this is the problem. Nancy Pelosi and even Paul Ryan believes that this is the movies. And if he knew better, if the NRA would have connected these guys with things, if the NRA would have even told us how much these guys are like waffling, right, and how chicken shit that they are, and how much they don't stand up for the Second Amendment, we could have done something about it, pushed back, but we could definitely educate them. So Paul Ryan would have been able to come out and said that this suppressor issue is a, you know, is a health issue and has nothing to do with what happened with this guy. It's, it's for the betterment of everyone else. In Europe, other places around the world, if you have rifles, if you have guns, you got to shoot them with suppressors. And I think, um, I, I think you're 100% correct. Um, but I think what we also need to recognize is, yes, the NRA screwed this up royally, but at the same time, you have to realize also that they are probably the reason why we still have AR-15s to defend. So, yeah, um, okay. like they are the biggest lightning rod organization. And I have had my beefs with the NRA in the past, just our last show, they were talking something and I made a video on it, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not like rah, rah, NRA, 100% behind those guys, but at the same time, I have to be because right now, 
I guarantee you there are things moving within the NRA to fight this p current piece of legislation and the other sister bills that are being introduced in Congress. So, right. Yeah. I mean, they, and they have come out and put out statements that they're against any new laws. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you want to affect change. If you really want to affect change on the, uh, uh, on this, on the NRA side, um, I, in the chat right now, if you're on the chat, I want you to say whether or not you voted on the NRA board of directors or not. I right. know that I did. Okay. I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so if you, if you, you can bitch about the NRA all you want, but if you didn't vote for the people that you wanted, if you didn't research the people on the board of the NRA, then you're part of the problem. Sorry. Um, yeah. Well, and so we may have would, people that don't, I, I, you know, we may have people who aren't like giving money to the NRA or NRA members. I think, and I think there's a lot of us who don't want to continue supporting the NRA. I know that I want to want to continue supporting it, right? I want to, but there's, there's a lot of things out there that like, I'm, I'm kind of in limbo to be honest with you, because I do want to support it. It's the biggest organization that's standing up out there for our rights. But there are other organizations, and maybe those organizations will be bigger if we supported them. But we could potentially have the same problem if we go support those guys. Because ultimately, people need to understand here that, like, what's the core of this problem happening? And I really think it goes back to what happened with, um, you know, with Rock River Arms. You know, I think yeah. it goes back to the thing that happened in Illinois, that they they just, you know, they were running these companies, Springfield Armory, they were running the companies, they got too busy, they hired lobbyists, right? I'm pretty sure this is the same thing that happened with the NRA here. Probably. The same Probably. exact thing. There yeah. are a lot of moving parts, and we all have to understand there are a lot of moving parts. Um, somebody mentioned Pete Brownells. Um, do I expect more out of him? Uh, I don't know this man personally. I would really like to know this guy. He seems like I buy stuff from his company all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But um, you all do, I think. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know him. One, right. um, based on his values, yes, I do. But he also hasn't been there very long, so yeah. um, you know. So was, I mean, he literally. Okay, so what was the question? I'm trying to figure out what was the question on Pete Brown now in the uh, audience because I, you know, I've been paying attention it. to our conversation. It's in and, the chat. Uh, somebody, somebody asked, "Quote: um, Did didn't you expect? Yes, you're right, but didn't you expect more out of Pete?" Okay, so I think that you know, um, Pete Brownell just in the last meeting became president, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, and then he's president, but what is Wayne Lapierre? Because it's almost like some, you know, this is almost like some Putin type shit going on. Yeah, here. I, I kind of <laughs> agree with I kind of agree with that. That's a good analogy. <laughs> Right. So yeah. you're you're not president of the NRA anymore, but you're but still, you still run shit. <laughs> so are you just like like the secret police within the. Yeah, you know, I, don't know. I, not, I have I'm, no idea. I don't understand the structure of the NRA right now. I could tell you I'm behind my shoulder to make sure that Wayne LaPierre is not going to come in through the back door and just black bag me. Right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what's going on there. So the thing about it is like. Um, I've known of Brownell, like Brownells, the company, like you said, for a long time. And obviously Pete Brownells, this is like, I think he's the third generation in the company from what I know. I saw him at the NRA show for the first time and I thought he was, you know, pretty cool guy. I wasn't even aware of the fact that he was the president of this thing. And then Mac was here on my show, I think before you came on and he was saying that, you know, we should give the NRA a certain amount of time. Obviously Mac has pulled his support, I think right now. Um, uh, yeah, I saw he was yeah. quite outspoken about that. I yeah, saw. and I think he's doing the right thing. I think that's how you you get their attention. I think Mac handled this pretty well in terms of like you know, first of all, he was supporting the NRA and in terms of like getting money from them by encouraging people to join the NRA, but he was giving that money to charity. Then when things came up, like we were talking about earlier, he was like, "Oh hell no, I'm pulling this down." I think yeah. now the NRA, from what I've seen Mac put out on things on Patreon and stuff like that, maybe he's got their attention a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I hope that he does because um, what we were talking about earlier about how the NRA basically came in and, and bought a bunch of you know new media people up, um, that clearly didn't go so well. Um, but what you should be doing is supporting um, programs like this one, 
um, maybe some YouTubers like uh, that are doing this stuff on their own that are um, pushing back like yourself. Yeah, that are push that are pushing back because um, maybe if you leverage those um, collective minds, then you would not have done something stupid like you did last week. Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, part of what's going on. I am trying to get Mac to come on. So I like, I think both of us are trying not to speak for Mac here, right? Right. Um, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that. I think he's an incredibly outspoken person. And I saw him and I saw that he was moved by this when I saw him at the IV 8888 event. Um, he was really moved by this. It's not like fake bullshit from Mac. I could just tell you that. I'm not putting you, it, you know. You can tell when Tim is mad, okay? Um, uh, he wears his, his heart on his sleeve kind of thing. Yeah. Just watch his most recent video. He was mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, I, I think that um, what we were talking about Pete Brownell. So I know that I saw him. I thought he was cool. Max said, hey, he's in here. Give him a chance to try to do something. I don't think this is enough time. I mean, when was the NRA? In like May? Yeah. Yeah, so that just happened. I don't think it's enough time. I know I'm not I'm also not going to speak for Pete Brownell. I would love to get him to come here on the show. You know, he is carrying like an entire massive company on his back as well as this responsibility with the NRA. I, I guess what I can tell you guys is when I saw he was at also at the IV 8888 event and for the folks that I know at Brownells and from talking to him, he wasn't like happy with this either. So yeah. yeah. So again, I'm not sure that he's directly uh, associated with the release, the press release that went out from the NRA. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if he had any part in crafting it whatsoever. Unfortunately, because he is the head of the NRA, um, he gets some of the you know he gets the, it. He, he yeah. gets it. No matter whether he had anything to do with a single character that was in it, unfortunately, he owns it. Even if he is totally on and our deservedly side. so, deservedly so, he signed right, up for right. this. Right. You know, maybe he's now finding out what he's going into um, and he's probably doing some serious soul searching about it right now. But this, I think, you have to look at whose names were on this statement, right? So you did not see Pete Brownell. I saw Wayne LaPierre, Chris Cox. Their names were on the statement. Who drafted this statement? I don't know. Like I'm saying, I'm pretty sure it's some lobbyists, just like in what happened in Illinois, that they have people working for them and those people are disconnected from us and they're not even making an attempt. I'm pretty sure if they would have like, if they would have, if they would have reached out even to someone like Mil like Mac or even Pete Brownell and said, oh, we're thinking about putting this statement forward. <laughs> what do you think about this? And I, and again, in the video that I made that even included part of the show, from last time I was on, right? I said, dude, you can send it to me and I will tell you whether you're fucking up or not, right? Mm -hmm. Like all yeah. that's all I had to do. Like it would have been so easy to send an email and I guarantee you, and I'm not speaking for him, but I guarantee you that Tim would have, if he got an email from somebody in the NRA saying, hey, we're thinking about saying this, what do you think? He would have been like, nah, bro, no, yeah. we need to fix this. Yeah, I think, you know what, and I mean, I don't think they want to listen to us because I think they've had no, they lots don't. of opportunities and the way that they go about this proves it to me because, you know, to go back to what I was saying about Paul Ryan and, and, and a lot of these Republicans that are out there, um, you can bring these guys to us. You can bring them. You, you have this NRA thing that goes on. Why don't you have, um, I don't know what you would call this, like panels or something like that where you have these people who are speaking for us, like talk to us and ask us about shit and maybe exchange numbers and just, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to take this person or that person. I'm not trying to blow myself up. This whole thing that I do at YouTube is the way that I get my gray hairs and spend my family's money, <laughs> you know? So, but if they can at least have some people to reach out to and just say like, Hey guys, um, this thing's in the news. What the hell's bump fire? You know? What do you guys think about this? Is this legal? Is this thing a machine gun? You know, is this something that you're that you think we should make illegal? I don't like bump fire, but I 100 percent disagree with anyone who wants to make it illegal. 100 yeah. percent. And, and you have to, again, look at the way the bill is crafted specifically uh, that we're talking about, because it's way worse than bump fire. If nobody if you're not following, you need to go watch somebody's video on this thing. Yeah. Um, doesn't have to be mine. But 
this is way worse than bump fire stocks or echo yeah. triggers or any of that sort of stuff. But um, I've used bump fire stocks. Um, I actually think, uh, well, I could get down a rabbit hole on that one. I won't go, won't go there. But um, I, I think they're a crappy product, right? Uh, they're a gimmick. Yeah. Um, I don't really think that the people who make it are really awesome people either. Okay. Um, that's all valid, uh, though. Uh, but um, I do I think that they ought to be regulated into obscurity? Absolutely not. No. Uh, for lots of different reasons, because where does it end? Like in your video that you know you were showing that you don't need a damn, you don't need the stock in order to create the bump fire effect. Yeah, I use my belt loop. Yeah, there's so many things you can use. Um, by the way, what kind of weak ass pants were you wearing that you just ripped the belt loop off? Dude, a gym. <laughs> Right. Oh, well, that's true. You do, Jim. I mean, <laughs> I, I was thinking those would got those have to be Levi's or something. Um, yeah. No, I believe no. They're um, there's some kind of. Uh, if, I actually, I can't find them anywhere <laughs> because they're they're actually really awesome type was, of pants. First of all, I apologize, but when I was looking at that video, I know that this makes no sense. But that part of the video, I was like, what the hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. you just. I know you didn't have that like. You know, pre-cut, did you? No. Okay, so you just ripped the the thing off. That's a bad sign right there, I and mean, that's a bad review for those pants. Well, I don't actually, care how strong you are. Well, here's the thing, man. Like uh, the way I film, and you can ask anybody who's filmed with me. Um, I am an off the cuff kind of guy, right? You never know, and this is why I should never go on live shows. Um, <laughs> or go on like television, right? Because you don't know what you're gonna get. Right. Oh, I'm fine with that though, because yeah. I'm like that. Yeah, I live because for that. It's like I could be t totally cool, calm, and collected, collected one moment, and then all of a sudden you say something that just kind of got me off the wrong way, and I could go full Alex Jones on your ass. Yeah, lose right. your shit. Yeah, I just <laughs> lose my shit, right? <laughs> yeah. So. so that's what you did to those poor jeans. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I need, like, I can't, I was like, I'm not going to adjust this camera. That's what was going through my head. I'm not going to adjust my camera to show this. I'm just going to rip this sucker off, right? Right. So yeah. it wasn't one of the important ones anyway because it's on the left side, right? Oh, okay. So the right one's the important one, right? Because that's where you put your gun. Oh, okay. If you say so. <laughs> yeah, I'll go along with that. But, you know, I, I think that – I think if they would have – if these guys even spend time and talk to people, I think the problem is is that they don't. You know, I think they really don't go about. I, and look, to go further with this, and I'm, you know, I mean, it, I like you said, I don't think this is all in the lap of the NRA, but it's in a lot of folks' laps out there. These guys went on, to, even they put out this statement, and we all push back immediately. I know I did. I got really pissed off. Matter of fact, I got in trouble with some people because I got pissed off. I had some fellow like gun YouTubers pissed at me because I got pissed off. Right, so. They knew people were pissed off, I'm pretty sure of this, and they were getting pushback. And then a day or like something like 20 hours later, they're on TV and uh, Wayne LaPierre, for example, was on Face the Nation more than like maybe, you know, 48 hours later saying that the NRA supports the, um, the ban on machine guns, you know, and, and saying again that they don't think people should modify their rifles. And the rate of fire, like they just double down on it. They are now starting to back off of that, but they can't, they already created these sound bites. Like, in what world do we think that this is like three dimensional chess when Nancy Pelosi, Diane Feinstein, and then Republicans are going to come out there and use the the sound bites that they put out against them? Um, yeah, and unfortunately, I had not seen that particular thing, but. Um uh, unfortunately, it's the whole out of touch thing. They're not communicating with people who are in touch. Um, I can't defend that statement at all because that is completely wrong. Yeah. I mean, so you say you haven't seen this, right? I don't know if you want me to like put this up in the in, in our internal chat or something so you could take a look at it. But this is like, for example, I've got the transcript of what Wayne LaPierre said on um, – on Face the Nation, I could put it up here for you so you can go through it real quick and you'll yeah. see. It's down yeah. towards the end. If you take a look at that, you'll see what I'm saying. I'll put it in the chat for everyone else to take a look at it. For those of you who haven't seen it, 
you know, and that's the thing that I think I, that's what I, like when I was, I was like, wow, what the hell, <laughs> you know, why is, why is he even out there having this conversation? And it kind of like bothers me also, man. Uh, you know, I saw other people that were out there just saying that these guys are geniuses and stuff like that. Um, you know, I know last night there was more people out there saying, oh, we're, see, I told you, we told you this was going to happen, that they were going to put out all these bills. There's lots of guys in our own community that say that they came out and said the NRA were geniuses and the rest of us who were complaining about it were stupid. In some case, we, we even got called gun nuts by fellow gun guys, right? Yeah. And then, and so now after all these laws are starting to surface now, those same people are going back out there and saying that they are geniuses because they knew that the NRA was were geniuses. And I don't know, like they're not fucking geniuses. <laughs> um, I think that they were trying to be geniuses and got a D minus. Yeah, that's the they, trap. <laughs> right. You know, and so um, that's kind of that. And that's if that's the way I would say my position on the whole thing is uh, I think that they were trying um, because they knew that it was coming and they failed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and for him to go on the news, I just read it real quick. Uh, unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and I think what it is, I mean, I don't know if you want to get into a situation of naming names here. I'm not really in the business of like creating a whole controversy over it. I just know that there's, it's just like disheartening to me. I get it. People have the right to have their opinion, but when you're attacking other people because they don't agree with you, this is where, you know, and then we're gun guys and we're in this fight. And then it's like they're doubling down, they're tripling down, they're quadrupling down. These laws are out, This the the, the uh, sound bites are out, and they're still saying, ooh, these are geniuses, you know, that's the problem. So, so for example, Colin Noir was saying that. He put out a statement saying, oh, at first he was kind of like taken aback by this whole thing that the NRA put out, but then when it was explained to him, he, under he understood how they're playing on a whole nother level. All right, so I'm just gonna say this right now. Um, I, I don't really want to get into this person's right, this person's wrong. You know, I don't want to go around the circle and do that sort of stuff yeah. because when you're in a circular firing squad, everybody gets hurt. Right. So, um, my perspective is this. Um, you screwed up, right? Like, it, the, if the NRA is watching, here it is. Modification of rifles is okay. If you're against it, you're wrong. No matter what, I don't care how many times you say it, it's not correct. Right. And the, the de facto ban on machine gun ownership in the United States is wrong, period. Mm -hmm. People should not have to pay $20,000 for a fucking M16 lower. And I actually, um, one of the things, one of the services that I work in, in the, uh, in the industry is because I know so many people, Typically, um, some of my friends will have a machine gun here or there that's ready to go. I help connect people who want to buy machine guns with people who are want to sell machine guns. Okay. And the amount of money that changes hands between the elite class of people that can afford to own these things is absolutely unacceptable. Now, I understand that there's a fair amount of money tied up in this stuff, and it's an investment and all that sort of, sort of jazz. But you are now taking people's rights away because you have now made it so expensive for them to get in, get into the game. Um, you cannot de facto re regulate people's ownership of military grade weapons away from them. It is yeah. against the constitution. And especially when you yourself have access to them. I've seen NRA TV shows where they're shooting full auto. Yeah. And, and obviously they have that legally and they have access to it or you know, access to people who have access, however the hell you want to put that thing. And it's well, insane, you know? It is. So let me, let me, let me put in perspective. So there was a, uh, and I'm not going to say the exact numbers here, but there was an account that was selling some, uh, some machine guns and, um, the, the, there was a 249 saw in, okay. in the, in the collection and it went for $1.1 $1 million. Wow, that's yeah. that's that's ridiculous. No, and it, if you if you want to buy an M two forty nine, I believe uh, the the regular one, it's something like is it seven eight hundred bucks? Just uh, semi automatic? Uh, no, no, is it fifteen hundred? No, no. Okay, you're, yeah, you're off, no, you're off an order of magnitude. An oh. M two forty nine 
Mm -hmm. an M249 is actually about 10 grand, right? Um, that's just what they cost to the military. It's a proxy. Okay, that's a full auto one. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a real one. Yeah, that's a real one. Right? A, okay, a real one you're saying is about 10 grand. About 10 grand. Okay, and that then, the troops would use, right? Yeah, okay. and then the ones that, well, they're actually a little bit more than 10 grand to the troops. Um, mm -hmm. But um, like the semi automatic one, um, I think, I don't know, check FN's website that came out with a semi automatic one. I think it's in the same ballpark, though. I think it's. Oh. Yeah, I'm right. sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I am off. I, did I say 750? It's like 7,500 or something. Yeah, like that. something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah, it's like 7,500, 8 thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it's my bad. See, but, look, I, I but, messed up, and you see what you do? You go, oh, I said the wrong thing. I messed but, up. I shouldn't have said that. I take it back. <laughs> however, you do have to re you do have to account for. Um, the intricacies of that gun and the research and development, all that sort of stuff. So um, I'm not saying that a 249 should cost our troops 12 grand. Yeah. I didn't um, right. <laughs> at all. Um, but I actually, I actually have one here, believe it or not. But if you look at the, um, if you look at what they do cost, um, they have about, you know, five grand in them. Approximately. Okay. Right. So in the manufacturer, well, the research and development, manufacture, all that sort of stuff. Because there's a lot of moving parts in there, right? And they're intricate machines. You got man hours to assemble them, all that sort of stuff, um, and test them. Like, they're not cheap machines to make, right? Everybody thinks that, you know, it, they should cost AR-15 prices. It's not an AR-15, right? Yeah. Um, no, that doesn't make sense. I mean, I could pull one out, but I don't want to make Lola go pull one out of the safe right now. Right. But, yeah. But if you, if you had, like, an... If you approached FN and you had an SOT or something like that, you're like, hey, I want to buy a Mark 46 or something like that. You know, that's about what you're going to be in for, right? It's about that much. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as a citizen of the United States, you should not have to get a 07 FFL and a special occupation tax stamp to be able to purchase that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's unconstitutional. Yeah. It's similar to someone saying, you know, and it's weird, right? The guy who, now obviously he didn't kill as many people. I think he killed one person, the guy that took a challenger and drove it into the crowd. You know, the um, couple crises back, right? Well, you've seen the same thing happen in Britain where people were killed that way and it wasn't yeah. just one person. Right. So. so it would be the similar thing for us to say, hey, to have this big, powerful car, you have to you can't just have your regular license you now have to get some kind of super special license and we're not even going to let people even manufacture these regular car, these kind of powerful cars anymore you know only the ones that exist then they they're grandfathered in and if you want to make a new one of these cars i mean that's crazy you're now denying someone the right to have a car that has that power that they can you know i mean obviously you got to follow speed limits or whatever on the roads but they can't go to the track and drive it or, or whatever it is, and I, and I just don't believe in that. You know, I think a lot of in car enthusiasts are easy to say, yeah, we should get some more gun control, but they don't want to hear that. Uh, roughly twice as many people were killed last year uh, in automobile-related incidents as were killed with firearms, and that includes yeah. all firearm-related stuff, including suicides, war, um, uh, 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 excuse me, suicides, war, accidents and homicides right, right. So. and so and then also what about the fact that you know when do we ban machine guns the last time was that back in the 90s 80s machine guns yeah oh that was in that was when the hughes amendment went through yeah so, so what have we stopped since then there's none of these things that's i mean even this bill that these guys are trying to push forward they're trying to like you know they're like they know that there's already the machine gun ban right so they're trying to push through anything that allows anything that allows you to modify your rifle, right? Why are they? Why why are we even doing this? You you ban machine guns, and that still didn't stop anything. If you ban this, it's still not going to stop anything. You know, because they're still trying to push something through. The reason why is never let a crisis go to waste, man. Never let a tragedy go to waste. They're using it as an excuse to take more from you because they don't care about they, the, the liberal politicians that are pushing these things, the, excuse me, the progressive politicians that are pushing these things, liberal 
and Republican, or excuse me, Democrat and Republican. Right. Um, they don't care about that sort of stuff. They don't care about the lives lost, even if they say that they do. They want control. They want the power out of your hands and only in theirs. Yeah. That's the truth of the situation. Right. And it's been a ubiquitous thing throughout history. Yeah, so serving Christ says 1934 required special tax and register. 1986 bans manufacturing. Yeah, 1986. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, so, and I mean, it hasn't done anything, and that's the reason why I think it shouldn't even be there. What it's done is effectively, like, stopped us from, you know, enjoying something just the way that a person would enjoy a really nice plane or boat or car. Or a cigar or yeah. a insert, you know, whatever. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking about starting to affect these changes before all this stuff kind of came down. Right. We were talking about silencers. We were talking about short bell rifles. We were talking about national reciprocity. But the unfortunate side of it, guys, is we waited too long. And I said this in my video. We waited too long. We sat on our hands. We kind of like, oh, it'll all be good because Trump's in office right now. Trump doesn't give a shit about you guys no he's in office dude he's president we can't undo that shit <laughs> no i mean no don't get me wrong do i prefer him to the alternative yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely um, yeah if, if you're talking about voting between hillary and trump or oh, yeah. even who was running who even the guy running in the uh independent party i wasn't going to vote for so what no, no i voted for trump yeah. right don't yeah, get me, me too yeah. yeah no shame I mean, yeah, I mean, Dude, look, I got look at but that. I was, but I'm a realist about do, it. Do I you know, know what this is? Have you seen this? Yeah, yeah, let me, do you know what that know. is? Check that out. Let's. I'll, uh, I'll yeah. lock it on my screen. Do you have yeah, any yeah. idea? It looks what? like a chicken with Donald Trump hair. It's the Trump rooster. Oh my god! Remember how the, someone put like a big blown up Trump? <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, I That's probably awesome. get you. I could probably get you one of these. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're, I'm not saying like it's what you were talking about before. You know, I support the NRA. I've given them my money. I've consistently given them my money, gone to the NRA shows. I've made videos. If you search on my channel NRA, you're going to see at least one or two videos that I've made in support of the NRA and all kinds of stuff. And to qualify my statements tonight, I'm an NRA life member. I give them lots of money every year. I'm also a certified NRA instructor, even though that really doesn't mean anything. Um, I buy my insurance every year through them so that if something bad were to happen on the range, I have some coverage for me and my business, right? So um, I am invested in the NRA, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that I can't be critical of them and say, yeah. hey, you're screwing up, right? right. I, still, I still believe in the organization. Um, but guys at the NRA, if you're watching, you got to cut this shit out. Right. I, mean, I think it's implicit in what we do, right? I mean, obviously, the folks out there who support, this is like a weird thing, right? Lots of people have had this discussion about what we do. I guess people put you put you like in the category of being a gun reviewer, gun guy, you're making gun videos. I take that really seriously because I, I want to make sure that I'm not pushing people to spend their hard-earned money to buy guns on something that's going to be terrible. So I do what I could do. And even if there are people out there or companies or whatever that support me, I tell people, hey, this company supports me. So you can draw your own conclusion from that when I'm talking about them. Um, and, I, and I take my time to research things and think about um, what I'm dealing with, right? Right. So I think that goes, that also goes along with, you You know, we, I don't, I don't feel like we should be out there doing what we're doing and just forget about gun rights and all that kind of stuff. I think it's implicit in what we do to be out there fighting for people's gun rights. Oh, 100%. And that's why I felt so compelled to make the video yesterday, drop everything I was doing and go make that video because it's really important for me to, um, to make sure that the people who listen to me and go for me, to me for advice uh, are hearing this from me. Right. right. Um, and if I could interject on what you said earlier, I actually don't consider myself a reviewer at all. Um, mm -hmm. I really hate that term, actually. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> because it, because it, um, it implies that uh, my focus is to write reviews on things. No, right. that's not what I do. I test guns for a living. That's what I do. And I just so happen to take a camera along with me. Right? Right. So 
Um, because there's a lot of people that'll call me a shill and this and that and the other. And yes, I have companies that contribute to, you know, make sure that the range has like gravel on it and make sure that we have bullets to shoot and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, make sure that I'm fed well enough. Obviously I'm, maybe I'm doing a little bit too much of that. Um, (laughs) I got you. Um, but there are expenses that go into doing this sort of stuff as well. And, we we derive that from within the industry. We're not taking money from corporate sponsors like Soros or anybody like that, right? Um, yeah. So, I mean, do you know how quickly we could, if we were like that, how quickly we could be turned? I mean, Bloomberg is just out there giving out billions. Yeah. Actually, I thought about it. I thought about like having a ra- like uh, saying that we were going to have a rally, right? <laughs> right. Like, okay, be careful uh, now. Someone no, can no, make listen, a sound listen, clip. Uh huh. No, Listen, uh, yeah, you're right about that. I, I do have to word this right. We're going to have a rally and it's going to cost this much. And then it's just a pr- program rally, but Bloomberg paid for it. Right. 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 That, would that okay. not be badass or what? Right. Oh, I yeah, would, absolutely. I totally we should, that. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind taking his money, but, you know, to support pro gun. Oh, yeah. Just repurpose it. Right. Yeah. But what I'm saying to you, it's very easy, you know, just like how there's people out there that the number one priority to them is uh, paying their bills and stuff like that. It's not a bad thing. I'm not knocking anyone for it. It could easily, someone could be approached. I mean, Bloomberg could sit you down in a room somewhere and go, okay, what's it going to (laughs) take? Yeah, I got a blank check right here, you know, and you, and you may see that you may see people doing it, but I I know that I'm doing this ultimately, even though I do have to figure out how to not, um, take my family down over standing up here and speaking out. I'm doing it because I felt like, you know, when I started it, I didn't see enough people um, reflecting my views, right? Not just as like a, you know, a black, being a black guy is like really a small part of it to me. And I, I try not to focus on that all the time. There's like so many views that I have and I didn't really feel like people were really out there reflecting those views and, and uh, talking the talk, not just, you know, being out there going, oh, look at this gun, it's awesome, or buy this thing, that they weren't doing enough because I came into it where I couldn't just go buy a machine gun. And I was like, why the hell, how come How come I can't do it? Because so, someone years ago gave up those rights and thought it was okay and it wasn't a big deal. And really, that's one of the reasons I got into it too, because I wasn't exactly like you said. Um, I wasn't seeing the things that were, you know, valuable to me. That's why I started going to things like SHOT Show and stuff like that because um, really it, at the time when I got into the gun industry, um, it was all a bunch of FUDs, right? Mm-hmm. And the the tactical community, so to speak, or the black gun community was really marginalized. Uh, when I built my first AR-15, it took nine months to get the parts. That's how little support there was at the time for um, that sort of stuff. Now that would be unheard of. Like you're right. pissed if you don't get your order from Palmetto state armory, um, in like two days. Right. right? Yeah. It's right. Ship. <laughs> yeah. It's like, damn it. Need, yeah. my, need my barrel now. Right. Yeah. Burn it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So same thing with online ammunition ordering and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, same thing with guns. There's really not innovation. I was shocked to see that back when I was a kid in the seventies living in England and looking at my dad's uh, popular science, popular mechanics magazines that um, <laughs> guns are pretty much at the same damn place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. even though we have all this technology, it, it, that, all these things at our fingertips, uh, we haven't, we haven't moved things forward and that's, you know, kind of what I wanted to do, man. You know, and I want to make sure that it moves forward in my kids. So like when my kids come along, obviously my boys are like 17 and 18, you know, and they're not, I I see them as kids, but they're not little children. I think they're men. But in another 10, 20 years, when they get serious about this, they are into guns, they shoot and all that. They look at all my guns as being their guns, but they're not super serious about it like I am yet. You know what I mean? Right. 100%. And, you know, I was, I grew up in this. I was, uh, you know, kind of like a farm boy type thing. And I was, you know, taught to hunt from an early age, you know, all that sort of stuff. I was, you know, um, supplied with, you know, guns to go and do that sort of stuff on our own property uh, with. Um, And then, you know, I kind of, to be honest, I I went away to school and it kind of, um, 
You yeah. got all super nerdy and educated, educated, yeah, all, all that sort of stuff. And then that's when I really learned the, that, you know, there are people out there that, I mean, I, you, I could say that I lived in a bubble, but I knew that that didn't, that, you know, there were people with differing views. I didn't realize until I got to in that environment, um, how, um, how marginalized our culture, the gun culture that is, has become in mainstream society. And I thought that was unacceptable. And that's when I thought, well, you know, maybe I should use this thing called YouTube to start making you yeah. know, videos on the premise. And, and part of it is just, um, oh, I see Walter is in the chat. Walter is saying, what's up from Knob Creek? What's up, Walter? If you hang out in the chat, Walter, for a few in a few more minutes, I'm going to show you something really cool that Walter sent me. Um, you know what? I think part of it also is that when you're younger, man, there's just parts of your brain that are just not developed. Is there a way to block people from the uh, chat? What's going on? Um, I think Lola's in there doing some stuff. All right. Yeah, because yeah. we got some we got some spammers here. Yeah, um, that all comes along with success. You have, <laughs> yeah. you have a bunch of people who want to jump in here and try to troll us and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, don't worry about it. If you if you see something, you can text Lola and let her know, and she will uh, dig into it for us because she is here. And if people are acting out of order, they will get either blocked, deleted, put on timeout, or some such. She thing. got it already. She oh, got it yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. but. Um, but yeah. you know, it's funny. Like if that if that douchebag that was in there um, is still watching, um, I want to point something out by joining the chat. You are joining the video. You boosted uh, the the viewership for the for the show by one. You put a bunch of things in the chat, which then influences the way the chat is ranked on Google, and you left comments. Right, so. Uh, all the interaction that you're doing is only helping us. Yeah, so. absolutely. So keep doing it. <laughs> so yeah, go Hang ahead on. And write all the crap that you want. In fact, yeah. if you do it, then the people who are in the chat are going to respond to you and then it's just going to go viral. So yeah. what was your quote from earlier? I forgot already. Um, <laughs> uh, your hate me. only makes me stronger. Yeah. Your hate only makes me stronger. <laughs> there you go. I want to remind everyone while we're on that note, click the thumbs up button, click that thumbs up button and make sure you share this video out there. I'm going to, we're going to take a little break because obviously, you know, me and Curtis, we can get deep into this and keep going. So I want to take a break because I know, and, and you guys really need to click the thumbs up button and share this because Curtis is going to show you something even cooler than what I'm going to show, but I'm going to show you guys something cool right now. Since Walter is hanging out there, see, I'm like taking stuff out of this box. I got this box from Walter today. There was a there was a nice catalog in there. Uh, what is this from? United Cutlery. You know, oh, that's cool. Stronger, sharper. You've heard of these dudes? No, that is neat. I yeah. I have heard of United Cutlery. Cut the, yeah. the, 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 those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So United Cutlery that was in there, but it's not it's not knives. I promise you, it's not knives. Is Do it that axe that's on the front of? Do you, no. Do you know what this is? Well, it's in plastic and it's refracting yeah. light, so I can't. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna rip it open here, so we could see. What? <laughs> Walter sent me gifts. Now, I don't have one. This of This looks like it's real, but the plastic says for costume purposes only. I'm guessing that's some like legal shit that has to be on there, but and I'm guessing this somehow. Hold on, I think this. I've never even. I didn't open this up before. I've never seen anything like this. I don't even know. Oh, I got to cut this off. Wait a second. Yeah, you got to take the speed of experience. You got to cut that off. Yeah. And then it's going to, uh, it'll actually press in because there'll be some geometry that locks it in. It'll press in and then, and then uh, screw on. Yeah. Now, I did use one of these. If you guys look at my social media, I put up something on Instagram of this with me and uh, Guns and Gear because Guns and Gear had, you know, in his videos, he's always wearing these masks. And um, I was like, man, you know what would be really, he came to the Hacienda to do a video with me. And I was like, it would be really cool if I could do that move you always do at the end of your videos on with my the, channel. Yeah, yeah, uh, hold on, wait, you do it again so everyone can see that, do it again, do it again. It's this yeah, signature the, the, move. Mr. the Mr. Gunsing gear, let's use this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he goes, yeah. <laughs> Right, you're cracking me. <laughs> right, okay. That's exactly what he does. Right? Yeah, it's you're awesome. cracking me. I love it every single time. Now, if I only had some dogs standing right here in a black and white filter, I'm I'd be telling centered, you, right? Absolutely. So, Guns and Gear does that, man. On his channel, he shoots the gun, 
I got to do this on Guns and Gear's channel, by the way. So you guys need to make sure you subscribe to Guns and Gear because you're going to see me and Mike doing that. Like I'm going to be shooting something, and then me and Mike are going to be doing the thing. Past the oh, that's camera. awesome. <laughs> going past the camera like that. So, yeah, so Walter was there from Safety Harbor Firearms. And, man, that's cool. But guess what? There's more. So there's another thing in here. I have no idea what this is. There it goes. It's a plastic bag. As you can tell, I don't know if you see the plastic bag in this or that. I'm also going to rip into this. This is in some kind of, uh, you ever seen one of these things? I don't know what this is. This is some kind of pouch. If if I die right now, Walter Keller, Safety Harbor Firearms, he's the one who took me out. He conveniently went off to uh, Knob Creek and then sent me the, whoa. There's, there's more of that stuff in here. Let me see. I don't even know what that is. These are apparently, I'm guessing these are the filters and this is another one. But this one came with its own bag. I'm not sure if this is Russian. Hold up the filter. Hold up the filter box. I want to see if they're real. The filters right there. They've got like Russian writing or okay. is that German okay. or Russian? I have no idea. I, I don't know. Uh, they're not American. It says, Obali Vervurus as Preds Vlasums do. Uh, I've never seen that packaging before, so yeah. I have, be, I yeah, don't know. Walter, it's dirty. This is some real stuff that came from some real places. Hold on, this is why you gotta have a knife. Hopefully, I don't cut myself or the gift of getting it out. So here's the other one. So who knows why the uh, who knows why the canister is in the center? Anybody? I have no. Uh, look at this one. Check this one out. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So. Really cool. And oh, I know this had two. This has two holes for those canisters, apparently. See that? So I guess you put two canisters on this. Go ahead. I'm going to let you. You're going to educate us on something here. I'm going to try to open up these things. Well, there's actually, you should usually. Don't open it? Well, well you shouldn't open. Well, you can um, if you're going to assemble it, right? But the um, there should be a block in there to put in one side because the ones that are mounted on the sides you're only there's, oh there is a block oh yeah there's well there's this thing oh uh, no that's yeah. a lens that's a lens okay that's like a backup lens and then there's these which i think are blocks probably. yeah that's it that's it oh, right there okay and the reason you do that is that one so the one is set up in the center let's see if anybody got in the got in the chat here um someone says intake and exhaust uh, yes, intake and exhaust, that's part of it, right? Um, but think about it. If you're shouldering your gun and there's a big oh. canister right here, how are you going to get a cheek weld, right? Oh, somebody, right. In the, okay. somebody, in the, somebody in the chat did did say that. Um, oh, yeah, someone said firing. Razor yeah. JB. Yeah. Oh, and there was another, you're awesome. And there was another guy that actually said cheek weld. Um, but okay. yes, that's that is the truth. You can't if it's if you got a big canister on the right side, you can't get that thing up there, right? So they'll put it in the center, or they'll or you'll offset it if you're right-handed. You'll put the exhaust, you know, in this side, and you put the the actual canister oh. on the left. Yeah, right? I think Razor JB got both of those. He said cheek weld and he said firing. So oh, okay, well there you Damn go. Damn it, Razor JB, you're awesome. Okay, um, so. I think Walter is in there telling us what this is. He says um, the holes where filters, uh, where the filters mount inside, or the, the holes are where the filters mount inside. Um, and then he says something is, Amer is a, an American copy. I just see he says it's a copy of the American mask. Right. So uh, it didn't, the packaging didn't look American to me. Um, they yes, come so in. Although it's a good imitation, they do come in that cellophane type stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but the actual, the protective casing, there's usually a protective casing inside the cellophane, like, um, um, help me, vacuum wrap thing, mm -hmm. right? There's usually a protective thing in there to keep them from yeah. getting damaged. I'm and trying to figure out, like, what country. So, Walter, tell us again, like, what country does this lighter one come from? Is it the Czech? Did he say it's Czech, Lola? This lighter one's from the Czech Republic. Okay, there you go. The lighter one is from the Czech Republic. The one with the, the bag, I guess. And then the other one 
Is this like uh, German or something, or is this supposed to be the American one? No, it can't be. This has also some crazy writing on it that looks. You got me, man. (laughs) Walter, what is this one? Our guys don't use those. (laughs) Yeah. So, so M40 Pro Mask is the American one, and uh, Walter's telling me something about Googling it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, Walter. That's what I'm going to do right now. Google it. So, there you go. Tyvin Show says the white one is an old American mask, and then the other one is a check. A check, and that stuff that I'm seeing on. Uh, or is on is Hebrew or something like that? I don't know. Uh, I, didn't, I don't know. I speak American and yeah. not very well either. Yeah. So, <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That was a nice little break. So that was. I no, think those cool. are cool. No, that is cool. Yeah. I, I never had that. Now I, uh, you know, and you know what I think is really cool that Guns and Gear actually drives around the country with two masks <laughs> in his yeah. truck. So that other people can wear them? That's cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, he let me wear it. I'm pretty sure he went and, like, extensively uh, cleaned it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, heck, strange funk all up in here. He would have to clean it after I wore it, too. Yeah. There'd be all kinds of... He's pretty cool because you can ask Lola. I don't, uh, I don't drink things from people. That's, like, a big deal if I do that. And I definitely would have, like, totally disinfected that thing after someone else. <laughs> Okay, so now Chris B wants to see the VSO gun channel porn. All right. He wants to see what you're doing. Hold on, let me lock it on you for a second. All right. Okay. I'm going to have to move my camera for this one, guys, because. Yeah. So um, this is a. Wait, show us the bag first. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing, right? Okay. So I'm going to have to move my camera here because it's the only way I can get a good shot of this, right? I'm going to try to do this right here because I, I have to do this, like, okay, there we go. So okay, here's yeah, the, you're on it. Here's the bag, right? This is a VanQuest bag, right? We've seen this all before. I actually just pulled this out a few days ago, so I don't actually remember the model number. I believe it's an Envoy, but it looks like a normal messenger bag, right? Well, if you open it up, we'll stand it up here. We have, and I'm trying to do this one-handed, but if I pull this out, I have an MP5 clone here. This is a Zena Z5P wearing a uh, Midwest Industries uh, HK rail, right? Thirty so round, wait, so 30 wait, round in it. So is that a so the Zenith is that that's a clone? Or, yeah. Okay. So they're they're good clones though. They're not shitty clones because they're okay. actually built on HK machinery. Right? Okay. So the Zenith is from where? It's an MKE manufacturer, so it's a Turkish. Turkish. Gun. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. a Turkish gun, but they basically. Uh, bought a bunch of HK machines so that they could run the parts, right? These aren't pieced together machines uh, that were put together here in America, right? Mm-hmm. So these are legit original machines, right? Nice. Okay. So that's this, right? And with it, I have actually, I was loading the last magazine uh, when. So Dave this is from an, um, an upcoming video, I take it, or? Yeah, this is going to be from a, this will be in a video that we're going to be. Uh, actually, hopefully, filming this week, but um, it's about uh, carrying when you can't carry. Like, uh, for instance, right now I'm even wearing gym shorts. Right, um, you can't really carry a handgun very easily when you are not wearing a belt. Right, um, okay. or if you are in a space where you can't have a gun on you all the time. Like, for instance, I spend a lot of time uh, lifting weights and stuff like that. So uh, it's hard for me to wear a gun while I'm doing chin-ups, right? Mm -hmm. Although it would probably be better to do them with it because I would weigh more, right? Um, Mm -hmm. But what's special about this thing that, that, you know, there's lots of people that put guns in bags, right? Right. But if I I do this properly, and I'm going to try to do this all in one stroke here. And Walter is saying that that's a license, a factory-made license HK. He wants to know how you like the Zenith. Um, it's actually it shoots very, very nice. I do like it. I've got about uh, 500 rounds on it right now, um, but I've been on the road, so I haven't really had an opportunity to do a whole lot. So this is the thing that I think is really cool from VanQuest that makes this different than other bags, um, and that is 
you'll see these handles here that I have taken out that were um, actually down inside there, Velcroed, Velcroed in there. If okay. I want to go on a flight, right? If I want to go on a, and I want to use this as my carry-on, all I do is all the gun stuff in this thing is secured in an organizer that is inside this bag. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's like a little tote you could pull out. Yeah, so it Velcro's on the bottom right there, right? Okay. And it Velcro's on the sides. And all of that gun stuff, and this was in there as well, is now out of the bag, right? And I love this because I have been uh, subject to multiple TSA infractions where <laughs> I have no. gone on a plane and had some kind of gun paraphernalia on me or in my bag. And they don't appreciate that very much. I'll tell you that I right now. I don't know how that could possibly ever happen. <laughs> um, the last time it happened, I had a pocket full of nine millimeter rounds um, in my back pocket as I was going through the rape scanner. Mm -hmm. And um, I, they were like, check your pockets. You got anything left? Right. And I reached in my back pocket and I felt it immediately. I'm like, shit. Right. Sure enough, a fistful of nine millimeter. I was on the range earlier that morning. Didn't change my clothes, grabbed all my shit, went, went to get on the plane, and sure enough, it was. And then there was another time something similar happened with my bag where I had something in my bag and the TSA also um, gave me, sent me away with uh, a nasty gram and a pretty hefty fine. So, Oh, really? So, with the, so you had um, live rounds, right? They weren't spent shell casings. Right, they're alive. Okay, and they what they just confiscated them, right? You didn't get in any big um, trouble for that one. That that particular instance, because I I managed to declare it before I went through the scanner, mm -hmm. uh, I did not get a fine for that one. They called the cop oh. over and they were like, "Well, why on earth do you have these? Why would you carry these around with you? This is terrible. Like, what 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 is the purpose for all this?" And I'm like, "Well, I own a gun. I own a." you know, a gun media company and I do this and, you know, I was on the range this morning they called the cop over and he's like, all right, cool. I was short on my, my work mag today anyway. Thanks. Right. <laughs> nice. Okay. Hey, yeah. at least it didn't go to waste. Yeah, I know. Right. Because they would have like probably gone through some hazmat procedure to destroy them and all that sort of jazz. So, right. okay. And, but then you got a fine. Do you want to tell us why you got the big fine on the other one or? Um, no, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. I understand. They, they'll probably like, they, I don't know if there's any legal ramifications of me talking about that or not, but yeah. Okay. So we don't want to um, get in trouble. Can we see that Zenith one more time? I see oh, you. Yeah, sure. it up. yeah. yeah I'm, I've got it so, locked on you. So just show us that Zenith. Um, you haven't put, have you put out any videos on this yet? No, no videos on this yet. Um, okay. They will be coming. Now, what's neat about this one, they've just got several models of this thing. This one has um, a, and just so that people won't freak out, I don't have one in the chamber here. This is how I actually carry it. Um, and that's how you probably should carry an HK gun anyway, um, just because of the, the mechanisms uh, in the gun. But if we unscrew this here, it has extended threads on the end for attachment of a silencer. Nice. And if you have a three lug adapter, you'll see that there's a, there are oh, cool. the tri, yeah. the tri lugs there as well. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. Um, so two methods for attachment of a silencer, if you care to, um, on top of here is the standard claw mount. Um, these things are a pain in the ass. I will say that, um, to attach, um, claw mounts terrible, but once it's on there, it's on there, right? You don't have to worry about it close up for, for everybody on that one. Okay. So you can mount an optic right on top of that. Okay. Thing. So where, so where did that one come from? That's a Zenith part as well. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. It comes with the gun. So, um, it's ready to go. Now this is an, an Midwest industries, uh, HK rail, very easy to install. And actually I did film the segment of the video where we install this thing. And I did it in the video for the, with the, they were going to do the off body running gun. It will be a running gun video. Um, so someone wants to know, I'm assuming this is nine, so other people, but someone's asking if this is 22. No, this is nine millimeter. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah, this is a nine millimeter gun. Um, now, uh, we'll get into that here in a second, but this rail, I literally put on with the tools that they supplied, no vice, no bench, no nothing. Um, you can remove the stock furniture uh, from an HK gun with just your hands. Um, 
but this rail is super easy to put on the easiest rail to put on that Midwest makes. Um, it literally took like, um, a minute and a half okay. to put on. So, um, okay. cool. Now, um, back to the nine millimeter thing. So a factory HK gun, right? If you were to go to H and K and want to buy this gun from H and K, it's going to cost you several thousand dollars, probably about 1800 to in the twos. Right. Okay. Um, this does not cost that much, right? So this is an HK clone, if you can call it a clone, that doesn't cost two grand. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. and if anybody in the chat could actually post the, the numbers um, on what these actually, I don't have them in front of me right now, uh, what they actually cost. Um, oh, and, okay. Um, I don't know who... I don't know if Walter knows about that. Um, like what it, the cost is of the Zenith. What is it exactly? Um, it's a it, Zenith. Uh, what? It's a Z5P. Z5P. Yeah. And I, like I said, I don't have the numbers right in front of me. Um, so I don't know what they're charging for these things these days, but it's not HK prices. So, right. Okay. Um, um, I don't. Yeah. And I believe they will accept all HK parts. So if you were like a SOT or something like that, and you wanted to um, convert this thing to yeah, a real, I mean, I see on on like gun brokers like fifteen hundred something like that, something like that. Yeah. Um, now they have a bunch of yeah, they have a bunch of different variants, so they range in price. Um, I'm not super well versed in their product line. Um, you know, I just started working with Zenith um on this project right i've done some things in the past with their guns like at industry events and stuff but this is my first like actual project that i'm gonna like actually have a dedicated or not a dedicated video it'll be in a couple videos because it's all about the pdw type thing upgrading firepower um, from your standard 15 round capacity handgun or anything like that um, this is a 30 round stick mag right and typically how you load this thing is you'll take it and you'll insert the magazine while the bolt is uh, locked to the rear, slap that thing and you're ready to go, right? And it'll strip one out of the mag and you're ready to go. So, yeah. Um, um, I think uh, rumblestrip.net says it's 1724 at Copper Customs. Razor JB says it's like 1424. So, you know, it's, it's a nice gun for sure. No, it is. It is. Yeah. Now, yeah. the way I choose to put it in, the, because it's in an off-body bag and there might be some stuff bouncing around in there, I choose to actually um, have the gun in this configuration um, where the, the, the actual charging handle is forward. The firing pin is actually down and the magazine is inserted and locked in, right? You have, okay. to, be, you have to be careful with that, though, because... Um, especially if you load these bags all the way to capacity, if the bolt is closed, there may not be enough squish to get past the, uh, the interference with the, the rounds in the magazine and the bolt. Right. Okay, so you want to back off one or two rounds? You can, or you can just monkey it in there and it'll be fine. But now what happens is if I were to try and squeeze the trigger on this gun, I get a mushy trigger. So that's my input to know the gun needs charged. If I'm like amped up on adrenaline or something like that, but you can pull the thing out, have it on fire, work the charging handle, and you're good to go, right? Okay. And that's kind of my methodology. And the video will go more into that as well. Yeah. Now, obviously, this is a pistol, and someone's yeah. asking, are there, um, is there, do they make a stock or a brace? Um, there are HK compatible braces out there. Um, I think, I haven't put one on it yet, but I think it might have to be modified for the, um, for the sliding braces. Because if we look at this here, there's a bracket here that is welded. Um, I'm, I'm Hold it up a little bit. Yeah, because your, yeah, your thing is in the way. There you go. Here, yeah, I see it. Um, yeah, right there. Yes, yeah, like welded on. Yeah, so I think that maybe the railed ones, the collapsible railed ones, might. you might need to remove that. I'm not sure. And you are probably going to have to have, um, probably have a, I mean, if you want to be, completely legal about it, you should probably have a gunsmith do it um, okay. because um, because then you could also say that, well, now you can attach a stock to that. You could have a constructive intent type thing. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know, um, but- I want to make sure all your bases are covered. Yeah, right. So 
I wouldn't, you know, super awesome play with that, right? But um, the one thing that interests me about this is because it's a pistol um, in the state of Ohio, which is where I live, um, this would be considered a pistol um, and it would be cool to conceal carry. So, awesome. <laughs> yeah, so this is nice. cool to conceal carry. Same thing with an AR-15 pistol with a brace, totally cool. Um, as soon as you put a stock on it, uh, not only is it an SBR, but you're not allowed to yeah. conceal. You're not allowed to conceal carry a uh, an SBR in the state of Ohio. Like, oh, okay. Just, and know. Walter from Safety Harbor says he wants he would like. Uh, I think they're going to make a collapsible stock for that, or they want to. So uh, I want one too. Now, what's really yeah. cool about this particular one that I find really useful is that it does have this swivel on the back of it, right? Mm -hmm. And What's cool about that is you can clip your HK hook sling into that and you can actually uh, tighten the sling around yourself and push out. Yeah. And it creates a similar effect to having a stock without a stock. Right. So it actually works quite well. So yeah, I've done it before. Um, if Walter ever develops one, I will definitely let you know so that, sure. um, you know, we'll, we'll try to get you one so you can test it. Sure. Absolutely. I am contemplating submitting a form one on this and getting a second one. So one for carry one for like pew pew range time. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I ever get my SOT, then I'm going to have to convert one too, because the, uh, the VSO mud girl got to shoot a full auto one uh, at Eric's event. And she's like, you need to go buy that right now. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. So nice. So now let me ask you, since that's a, um, since that's an HK clone, that means, cause I think there's, um, I think there's some binary triggers coming out for that. There are, um, and I am in. I have talked to Franklin Armory about getting one in here for a video project. Um, they don't have any samples right now uh, to get to me, and I actually um, the state of those things is under question right now with the legislation. So yeah, yeah. That, you know that we that's why we have to keep pushing back against it um i will show this because people want to see some more gun porn before we go on here so we were talking about the m24 oh. there you go now, bitches now is that a new manufacturer is that a new manufacturer a um or is that an nfa item um this is a new manufacturer so it's not full auto yet oh it's not okay okay yeah, but it's you're not yet in. But you're yeah. going to, it'll be converted on the SOT. I got it. Yes, absolutely. No, I'm not on mine. I'm Big Daddy Guns. I, I so, am on there. I am on their um, stuff. So I do have access to all those things. Now, what's this. crazy that a lot of people don't realize is that is because it's a semi automatic gun and it's not a machine gun when it was purchased, mm -hmm. is that gun actually has to be not only semi automatic, but it also has to be closed bolt. So they have to back convert that gun to a, an open bolt configuration and uh, make it full auto. So there's two, yeah. there's double whammies in there. Yeah, right? it's a lot of work to actually do it. And we're not, I don't think we're gonna do it all here. There's a company in Utah that escapes me right now that I believe this is gonna wind up, uh, wound up going to, and that's gonna be done at some point. So I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> Yeah, because I've shot these things, and I think they had several of these at the IV eighty eight eighty eight events, right? Uh, they had a couple. Um, yeah. The one, the the one that was the most fun is the two forty that they had there. Um, mm -hmm. It's the three hundred eight version. Uh, there's a few differences as well, but it's a supremely fun gun to shoot. Um, that's the one they put all the um, all the rugged suppressors on. Right? Oh, okay. Was that the one that was on the ground or the one that was on a tripod? That was the one that was on the tripod. Oh, okay. And yeah. I think, uh, so we're talking, let's talk a little bit about the uh, IV8888 event. I know sure. some people were asking me to um, get into this and Walter says 7,500. I'm assuming he's talking about that. Um, it's going to take a lot more than that by the time we're finished done with, uh, with it. So, um, so folks were asking me to find out what the 8888 means. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I only assume that it has to, not, I, okay, never mind. I don't know. All right. Yeah. I, so I, I want to be wrong. I'm that kid that never raised his hand in school because he didn't want to be wrong, right? Well, yeah. So um, at the risk of getting into trouble for it and speaking out of turn with a rock veteran, um, 
you know, I think it's just that they were, or Eric, when he started the channel, was a fan of, who is it that has the number 88? Is it Dale Earnhardt? I don't know about uh, NASCAR or anything like that. I, have to, I don't either. have to admit to you. So there's one of those NASCAR drivers that his number is 88. So I think it's Earn. I think it is. I think it's Dale Earnhardt. I could be wrong. Somebody let me know. If I'm wrong there, actually, you know what? I'll look it up. I'll look it up right now while we're talking. And he just, I think that they, that's what Eric did. Basically, um, you know, basically he took that number and, uh, you know, just doubled it. Yeah, he was number 88. So, you know, there you go. That makes sense to me. Um, I, you know, people get into all kinds of theories and nonsense about things and, super meanings of stuff and all that. I like the number. I graduated high school in 88, so. Um, I, I got one for you. I got you. I got one for you. Uh -huh. so, and we have um, so secret meanings of stuff. Um, my friend, um, James Yeager, I go to his, I go to his uh, school to train periodically, and there's a running pool in the team room to figure out what his arm tattoo means, right? Which He's, one? The, all the all the shell casings. All the shell casings, right? Uh -huh. We're trying to. We, we still haven't figured it out yet, and he won't tell any of us. So we're like, um, eventually, we're gonna get the pool high enough where we can be like, "All right, dude, what's it mean?" Right? Mm -hmm. Here's here's like, here's here's a wad of cash, right? Right. Uh -huh. um, yeah. <laughs> and then he'll probably be like, "Dude, it's just shell casings." Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, are you sure that James even knows what the hell it means? <laughs> no, I'm sure that he does. I'm sure that he has some kind of meaning. Oh, okay. You don't, Other than, huh? You don't, you don't get a, you don't get a sleeve all the way down your arm with no meaning. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, well, to me, lots of things have meaning. So, you know, some people apply meanings to things. Some people just do stuff. So, you know, it. it is what it is. When you find out, you can let the rest of us know. How about that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, just make sure you're rolling to, on that. Yeah, then you'll have to, but then you'll have to get a pool to get me, right? Um, yeah. But, Mike um, Bryant says it's his unconfirmed kill count. <laughs> yeah, you're okay. not the first person to say that in the pool, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, so but, obviously it's not that. Yeah, it's probably not that. Um, now, he's um, not a so crit or something like that, so far as I know, right? No. Because no. then he would have like a bunch of tears or probably no tears. <laughs> um, so. so there's a there's a some talk in the chat about the 240 versus the 249. The 240 mm -hmm. is the 308 gun. The 249 is the 556 gun. There is a chopped down version of the 249, which is actually the gun that I want, which is called the the Mark 46. Okay. Um, you want that one? I actually have a video on the Mark 46. We were at a shoot where a guy actually um, has one. And let me tell you what, um, so a saw, uh, an M249 weighs like 13 pounds, maybe a little bit more if you get the nut sack on it, unloaded, mm -hmm. right? And anybody who is um, in the military that was that used that weapon that's in the chat will convert, confirm that she's a heavy bitch, right? Mm -hmm. um, the 240 is heavier. Um, okay. Oh, well, because that's the 308 one. You're yeah, saying. It's, it's over. It's overbuilt. It's even heavier. But mm -hmm. then you add, um, then you add a let's just say a hundred round belt, right, to that to that 249. I believe that the nut sack holds 200, right. But if you figure a 30 round magazine weighs a pound, right, that's approximately what we say. If it's just a hundred, if it's just a hundred uh, rounds, and that's mm -hmm. three magazines plus, so that's an mm -hmm. extra three pounds. So that means it's a 17 pound gun, mm -hmm. right? So that's a heavy gun, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so, what's the, so so you're saying, what's the number one you're saying again? Two what? The two? 249. The one that you like is the 240. Oh, Mark 46, MK46. Mark 46. Yeah, MK46. Okay. If you Google Mark 46, it should okay. come up and there should be a video. Um, okay. Let me see if it actually comes up. Mark, is it you? MK. Yeah, MK-46, hit videos, and um, let's see. Actually, there's a lot of people who have Mark 46s. Yeah, I see IV has one. That looks like an SBR kind of version. Is it? Yeah, they basically, they basically put a short barrel in it, shorten the gas system. Um, so put Mark 46 VSO in and see what happens. Okay. Um, well, let's see what you did with this thing. Um, 
I'm probably going to have to do this inside of YouTube. Yeah, you might have to do inside of YouTube. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I, I saw it. Wait, I saw it there. It was there. Hold on a second. It was there. No, actually, no, that wasn't it. <laughs> it's some kind of 22 Nosler or something like that came up. Yeah, I know. That came up, which is weird. Like, yeah, that's like, I typed that in. I hope that it didn't get deleted. No, it's so. here. I'm looking at the video. No, actually, no, I'm not looking at the video. This is um, from somewhere else. Hold on. I'm going to search this. Uh, Let me let's uh, make sure that your video is still here. Yeah, it may not. It may have disappeared. Uh, yeah, I don't see it. That's not good. Hmm. I hope that uh, I didn't get removed because of the crisis. Why? How is this related to the crisis? I don't know. It's a mach It's probably got machine gun in the in the title. Huh. Hmm. Let me see. I'm going to try to search inside of your video. So MK-46, is that how yeah. you titled it? Or did you change that? No, that's that's what it is. Nope. Hmm. Wait, did, I, I see M249S semi-automatic saw. No, that's a video. I see, yeah, I see a whole bunch of other things, but no, it's not coming up, man. You huh, might have to go check up on that one. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's pretty bad. I uh, wonder why it's missing. Yeah, you might have to look internally in your videos and see if that's like, but but if they took it down, they should have given you some kind of notification, right? Yeah, you would think, but it's, uh, it's I'm not seeing it, so I'm just going to, we can keep keep on keeping on with the show. Yeah. I'm just going to okay. search no, video. No, it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's, so, you know, I was going to talk about the IV88 thing because I didn't really get a good chance to get into it. It was a fun event for me. Oh, yeah. You know, I enjoyed going out there. It did rain a little bit when we first got there. And obviously, it was a little weird because everyone's on edge with, you know, all this different stuff going on. And, and like, I think we, we kind of knew there were going to be laws coming out. And, you know, there's all this uh, anxiety, I want to say coming up. But other than that, I think we eventually just got over that. There was actually a guy there from the NRA, believe it or not. Oh, I didn't. Um, there was a PR just, guy there from the NRA and he was getting a, he was getting an airfoil from people. But, and he was telling me that he, you know, he he thought twice about coming out there. But then he was like, oh, you know, these are gun guys. I, I should survive <laughs> and be able to go home. So he yeah. heard from us, but he was fine. No one laid a, a glove on him. You well, know, so. I don't, we're like, a, I've said this before, we're, we're not bad people, right? So we, we wouldn't do that to that guy, even though his organization. Yeah. Yeah. You, know. you know, he works there just like a lot of people do. And I think he tries, you know, um, he's on the ground. Hey, I give it to him that he was there on the ground talking to people. Not that I'm expecting the NRA to show up at an event like that, but I think they should. I think they should think about that. You know, before these guys get out there and start talking for us, they might want to dig into some of this stuff that we do. So um, uh, there, I guess there's some questions in here. I know we've talked about this before, uh, but Lola put up some questions. Are you prior military? We've covered this before. You want to hit that again? Uh, yeah. So, um, no, I'm not. I'm not prior military. Um, I was a scientist. So I went to school right out of high school and got a science degree. And then I went to work for a couple companies and then I was recruited um, by a subcontractor to um, do some chemistry work for them on behalf of the government type thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's as far as I care to dig into it. Um, but um, you've been a gun guy since you were a kid. I was a gun guy since I was a kid, but that's kind of my science background. And that's kind of, you can see elements of that in a lot of the video stuff that I do. Um, you can see the kind of like science background coming out and, and, you know, bleeding through the pages, so to speak. Um, and that's kind of where that came from. So, um, I got to do some cool nerdy things with that side of the house when I was doing that sort of stuff, but then Obama happened, um, mm -hmm. and, and kind of killed that whole thing. So, um, it was cool, but then I decided that, you know, this job is way cooler Right. So right, absolutely. Um, now, as a result of, you know, doing the YouTube thing and uh, some people that I um, 
that I met while I was doing that other stuff. Um, I've gotten opportunities to go do some awesome training at some places that has then uh, upgraded my skill set to um, to the level that it is now. And, and it's funny that they that somebody asked that question because I actually get that question quite a lot um, mm-hmm. because I kind of know the lingo. Um, I've got come, yeah, you're a big beefy dude. I got the I got some experience on on you know small yeah. pieces of experience, and then the other side of it that um, is I have family in the military. Um, so, um, when they were stationed various places, I would go visit them a lot and, uh, you know, attack bacon, right? Yeah. Yeah. My, my brother tactical bacon, um, you know, he did that thing for a long period of time. You see him make some cameos every once in a while. Um, he may or may not be getting out of the military. We're not sure at this point in time. Um, okay. but right now he is, you know, he's been in for a while, right? Yeah. He's been in for a while. His, his, his time is is almost there. So uh, we don't know. Uh, it's not my place to discuss it anyway. So, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so, yeah. So I'm getting a question here. Uh, what do we think about the new reports on the Vegas shooting? Um, I, I'd have to know specifically what new reports you guys are talking about. I know that the Mandalay, um, Mandalay Bay resorts have like their own timeline versus the police timeline. So I saw something about that in the Chicago Tribune. There's like, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to know what the hell happened in this place ever. And it's definitely, definitely going to be a while before we have any kind of idea of what happened in there. But Mandalay Bay says, um, Mandalay Bay hotel officials said Thursday, the Las Vegas gunman wounded a security guard in a hotel hallway within 40 seconds of firing into the crowd at a music festival. So I don't know what that means within. Like he fired at the crowd and then 40 seconds later, he got into this thing with a security guard. I don't know what that is. And I don't know how the security guard got up there unless it was, you know, maybe the windows or something triggered something. But they're um, so basically disputing a police timeline that puts six minutes from the time the guard was shot. And when uh, this guy, I don't want to mention his name, committed the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. So, yeah, you know, this is going to go the route of, um, of 9-11. There's going to be all kinds of theories. I saw someone asking in the chat earlier, like, how come, you know, this terrible thing happened at the nightclub in Orlando and we didn't get all of this and why are we getting it now? I don't know if you have any comments on that. Um, okay. I am typically not your conspiracy theorist type person. Um, it's just... I, I don't really subscribe to that sort of stuff. Um, but in this particular instance, having watched the video and seeing the sustained rate of fire that this dude was putting out, supposedly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, having used the product myself and seeing people who have used this product, either one of two things is happening in this thing. Either this dude was a closet um, crazy person Right. Like he went out and got like specific training from some kind of group somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Some anti-American group or, you know, something like that. He has some kind of training to allow him to do that. Or he had help. Somebody else is up there pulling triggers, too. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, look, and you've used them, Hank, as well. It's not really easy to make the bump fire stock go. No, it's not consistent. It doesn't have a consistent rate of fire. No, it doesn't. Now you can get it. I have got it to do it before, but it take takes a lot of pr- practice. It takes a lot of practice. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, this dude supposedly did have a lot of money. He could have practiced a whole lot with it before he did it. But at the same time, I'm saying, like, if you listen to it, it 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 it's almost like you feel it's too consistent. It's almost too consistent. Yeah. For, for now, me. when I heard initially what I heard sounded to me, I know that the people are putting out stuff that sounds very consistent, but initially what I heard sounded to me like it was not consistent, you know, like it was picking up and slowing down initially what I heard uh, when, when I woke up the next morning and it was on the news because in my mind I was thinking, wow, that sounds like, you know, maybe some kind of trigger or something like that because none of these things – 
that's one of the things with all of this that folks have to realize, even with the ATF, why if they deem if they deem this thing a machine gun, then you know they're doing it because of political pressure, right? Because they looked at this over and over again, and they said this is not a machine gun because a machine gun would be you pull the trigger, you hold the trigger, it keeps firing until it's empty. Well, I will say that my my initial thoughts when I watched the video was actually a real belt-fed machine gun. And that's what you thought? Okay. That's what, when listening to it, having been around lots of belt-fed machine guns, it yeah. sounded to me like um, what happens when there's tension on the belt. Okay. Um, you will have a belt that's heavy, right? And it might be gathered. You might have a small okay. pile of the belt so, right there below the below the gun. And it'll expend that really quick. And then when it gets the weight of the full belt on it, it'll slow down. And then usually what happens on a belt fed gun is that that lifter, that feed tray will pull, uh, will basically create a bunch of inertia on the belt, especially if you're laying down and it will cause the, the belt to roll across the floor and gather again. Right. So now you've got an instantaneous kind of like weightlessness there and the, and the machine gun will, will pick up faster. Okay. So right? you're saying you heard the inconsistency in speeds, but to you, it sounded like a machine gun. And it and sounded like a, it sounded like a, I, I actually like a belt said, fed. I was saying a, like a, a belt fed. I initially said, if you go back to my Facebook feed, I thought it was an RPK or a, a P, no, an RPD. I thought it was an RPD. Yeah. But. So that's the weird thing about all of this. I think lots of thoughts went through all our minds, and I think we don't really know. Like, for example, if this guy had all this money, why did he go this route? You know, was he – they're saying he wasn't really into guns. I kind of believe that because my experience with the slide fire is that it's not – you know, me personally trying to shoot that thing, it would would not be very successful. We've tried it before. I had I've never gotten enough rounds consistently out of it to do a video. So the thing about this situation, and you said this at the beginning, we'll never know like what really happened. I think, um, but the the biggest problem that I see it with this whole thing is there's too much stuff that went right and too much stuff that was also wrong about it too. Like this dude was able to take slide fire, all these, you know, all these guns up there, all with these bump stocks on them and get sustained rays of fire, but he wasn't a big gun guy. Yeah. Right. And um, he, he did that. And he did that on his own. He took all this luggage into a hotel like over days on his own that, uh, that the hotel is a no gun hotel. Yeah. Well, I mean, and then the other side of searching, but you know, there's a dude just keeps taking luggage upstairs. No one notices that. The other thing that I wanted to really kind of like, I don't know, like, did, do we have a tox report on the dude yet? Do we have that? I don't think so. I don't think there's a lot so, of, there's a lot of things that they're not putting out on this guy. Well, what I would really like to know is if the dude was like hopped up on, on speed or something like that, because mm -hmm. Like I could believe maybe then if he was under some serious like uppers, because let me tell you, let me tell you just this. If you just look at the math of about the, the number of people killed, the number of people injured for me, uh, a dude that works out on a regular basis in relatively good cardiovascular shape and is decently strong. It would be a workout to do that with that equipment. It would be a workout to do that with the, with, a belt fit, right? So the question in my mind is how did this sloppy 60 plus year old dude that is completely um, basically a piece of shit for all intents and purposes accomplish this? And I don't know how that's possible in my, in my mind, right? Yeah. That's why I cast doubt on a lot of the information that we're giving, that we are being given because I don't see how it's physically possible. Yeah. And then what really is the timeline here? What did, did he like, you know, the hotel is contesting it a matter of six minutes or 40 seconds. The question is, did the security guard go to his door before he started doing this? And so what's the, what does that mean? You know, why did that security guard go there? And did that trigger him doing this? I'm not trying to blame the security guard or the hotel or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't yeah. nobody misinterpret that as yeah. that. You know what I think? I think 
this that this dude is a fucking like LARPer piece of shit that goes around to these various like venues and stuff and like play acts this stuff right mm-hmm. and he's like a mental case and he just kind of does it you all seen the people that play with the foam swords and stuff like that in the middle of the woods right you all okay. heard of this live action role play stuff right. i think that this was that kind of dude right and he got got caught and he was kind of in his like psychosis and went crazy okay but so but why did he have these you know this number of guns and then the ammo and all that kind of stuff because what he's you have to get inside the mind of somebody who does that kind of weird crap Mm -hmm. is like they have it all there so they they can put themselves into the into the the scene he was envisioning Mm -hmm. himself as a mass murderer type oh getting off on it kind of yeah yeah Yeah. he was like you know i bet you he had some like ropes in the other room so he could choke himself while you way he works it i you know I, i'm sure that he had some weird crap like that he's probably got a stash of child porn and all that sort of stuff right like yeah. um, I, I don't think we're finding out like why what happened here for a long time if ever oh yeah. yeah you know and and they're definitely not giving us a lot of details which i mean by now they should be able to tell us everything i think like what's happening is there's a whole bunch of blanks so we are filling in the blanks we're filling in the blanks because they exist why do blanks exist two weeks after this whole thing? You, oh, know? Dude, and, you know, and why are we now like we're all we're already over that, and we're now on to oh, the way to solve this is to more gun control, right? And it just so happens to conveniently fit. I and I think the reason that you have holes is because there's probably something that the media doesn't want you to know about it. I guarantee you that if somebody that was in the image of you or I. Uh, did something like that, then we would know absolutely everything about it. And it would be down to what kind of underwear we wore that day. But you're talking, I mean, you're not talking about London, right? So London, when things go bad there, they have all these cameras, they find out all this stuff. But you are talking about Las Vegas. Cameras are everywhere. There, I mean, you can't walk. You can't walk anywhere without being yeah. on a camera. We're, we're, we, you know, and it's. I'm not. This is not me trying to draw any kind of lines. But it's funny that OJ got released like a day before this happened, <laughs> right? And OJ, OJ, when he got into trouble, we were seeing video of him on the on the uh, elevators. You know, all over the the casino. So where's the footage of this guy all over the casino? There has to be footage of him in the lobby, getting on the elevator, walking down the hall. They they record everything in uh, in these hotels. He didn't I mean, he didn't make one trip. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah, for example, when we're in shot we're at Shot Show and you could tell me if I'm wrong about this, but when we're at Shot Show, um, these hotels are like watching us all the time because you know sometimes you have people suitcasing it. And what I mean by suitcasing it, there's some people who go to Vegas for SHOT Show, but don't pay to either be on the show floor or at media day and they bring uh, their guns or whatever with them that they manufacture and they're showing them to people in their hotel rooms and and stuff like that. And they get busted all the time. It happened last year, somebody got busted. Yeah, dudes are always getting busted. Some people get busted like three, four times. (laughs) You know, so how is that happening? Because the hotel's watching everything that happens. Now maybe um, they're only doing that when there's gun guys there. I don't no, know. No, they no. It's it was worse than that this year. Um, I won't name them, um, but some of my friends own a company that I work with, and they were walking around with their shirts on, right? They were there attending because they also do media stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And they were there as vendors, but they were not exhibiting. They mm-hmm. were there as industry personnel. Some of, they paid some of their people to get in. They had other media people that were there and they were walk, all walking around with their shirts on for their company. And they were asked, they were actually escorted off the show floor and told to change their shirts. Right. Yeah. I mean, Vegas yeah. is not kidding around. They're not messing around with anything. I could tell you, and it's not just for a shot show either. Um, I, I, I go but, to Vegas like three times a year for shows. But let's, let me, let me, let's, let's, say this like if you haven't been to shot show before you don't understand the statements that i just made there are tens of thousands of people moving through a space at any given time right and they had enough camera footage of my friends yeah with a shirt from a company that there's a billion companies there yeah a billion companies i mean like so many people moving past the camera at once they had enough information from the cameras 
to get a shot of their shirt, get a shot of their faces, and find a way to correlate the two together. And where their asses were at that moment, because they moved. <laughs> and then go find them and pull them off the floor. Yeah, it's happening. It's not. Look, I go to Vegas for SHOT Show for the NAB, which is a National Association of Broadcasting show. And I went there for um, SEMA also last year. And it happens at all those things. Like, um, you know, at older SHOT Shows, after the show, everyone's packing up. You could buy, like, it's a good time to buy gear because no one wants to take that gear and pack it up and ship it back to wherever you're going. Well, you can't do that anymore. They, they crack down on that. So at the end of the show, those guys, if you go around and you're like, hey, man, you know, instead of you guys packing up that gear, I'll be happy to buy it or whatever. They say no, because the 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 show Nazis are all over them if they try to sell stuff because they're not allowed to do it. And that's not just at the shot show. I've seen that at the NAB. I've seen it at um, at SEMA even. You know, they just don't want it going down, going down. So they have a lot of security and they're looking at things. Now, that's a show going on. But the hotels, we all know these hotels have lots of security. And we right. haven't seen any, I think we've seen maybe some pictures of this guy, but we haven't seen him going up and down the elevator, walking through the hallways. We haven't seen the security guard doing it. Yeah, why is that? Um, I mean, there should be so much. that they, they have images of this dude from the time he showed up at the Vegas airport to the time he committed... His crime. Yeah, that's another thing. So imagine this guy, if he, now, was he from Vegas or was he from um, California? I think he's yeah, from Nevada. Know. He's from Nevada. I don't know. Yeah, okay. so maybe he didn't, I don't think he flew in, but I know he's from Nevada. And I think I saw today in the news that well, he bought, I mean, I, I just made an assumption. Yeah, that he flew right. In, right, I, mean, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but you know, he bought some of the guns in Nevada and some of them in California. So that shows you what California laws are doing. Right. Right. Those aren't doing anything. And he bought most of them recently. Right. So I, listen, I think in the end, when people want to do destructive things, you can't stop them. That's unfortunate, man. It's terrible. I, it doesn't make me feel good that we live in that world. But this is the reality of the world that we live in. We have broken people. Broken people want to hurt other people and they will find ways. You have to. And I would like to add to that. Um, the problem isn't the weapons right? No matter how you slice it, it is the people in that the base human nature is violence, period. The only thing that has socialized us normal people, quote unquote, uh, away from violence is the, for, is the threat of violence or force, right? If you think about what holds the rule of law up, people with guns will show up and mess up your day if you violate the law. That is just what that is what keeps us um, as as spe as a species yeah, under polite. check. Yes, exactly. Polite, polite right? society. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. And the base human condition is a violent species. We have conquered the earth through force. We are the dominant species on 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 the planet, and the only reason. We have any, the only place that we have any contestants of our dominance on this planet is in the ocean. And that's because guns don't work underwater. Hmm. So if you think about it, you, you, you step out into the ocean, knee deep, you're no longer the apex predator. Yeah. I mean, but, we also don't breathe underwater easy either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But that can be fixed. We haven't yeah. really, well, actually... There are some companies working on the guns underwater thing, and they actually work really, really well. I can't talk about it right this second, but hopefully we'll have something working in the next couple of months. Um, but um, that said, the only thing that stops people from going off the handles is the rule of law, and the rule of law is backed up by dudes with guns. By force, yeah, the th or by the threat of force. That's the only thing that humans understand. So... You have people that no longer care about the rule of law, force no longer scares them and no longer keeps them in check. So the only way that you can counteract somebody who doesn't care about the, the rule of law is instantaneous, overwhelming, responsive force, right? So you wanna fix this sort of stuff? I've got a perfect solution for you. It's very, very simple. Um, you wanna make a little common sense gun control law that works? Here it is. If you have an event that has more than a thousand people at it, 
you have to supply overwhelming suppressive force in the form of security. That means snipers on the roof. That means re, uh, SWAT-based response teams. Everybody bitches about the 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 militarization of police. Well, guess what? That's what it's there for, right? right? You need and, those those things. I mean, we we, we actually, you know, and I'm not trying to backpedal on anything, but we actually have been to several events where there's lots of people with guns, right? Because at the, I mean, on their body, guns yeah. are loaded that are, you know danger hot or whatever you want to call it right so that's the nra shows that's one thing about the nra right at the nra shows they typically do these shows in places where you can go in armed conceal carry i've even seen open carry we've never had anything like this go down no no never but even then if you saw donald trump move through the show floor or donald jr move through the show floor at the nra convention he had a bunch of suits around him. He had two thick of guys with suits. And I'll yeah. tell you what, that button right here was was closed on about half those suits, right? You know what that means? That yeah. means that means submachine that's the, Yeah, that's, that's the full auto bad boys in there. The yeah, stuff we can't have, they had. That's, that's yeah. an MP7 is what yeah. that yeah. is. With armor right? piercing. <laughs> yeah, with black tip in it. That's what that's yeah. for. Yeah, but the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, one, I'm, I'm giving kudos to the fact that NRA does do that. They don't make us go to a show disarmed and all that kind of stuff. We go there. We're armed. Nothing happens. And and, and we don't even all agree on, on shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know this. Yeah. As gun right. guys, we're, we're all alphas. You know, some real, some not real, some in the middle of that. You know, and there's different types of alphas, if you want to put it that way, right? I always tend to think that real bad boys move in silence and violence. You know, and they don't get out there and talk a lot of shit. But we don't all get along with each other. But we go to these shows, and you have a, you know, I think that sometimes you have a few, you know, choice words <laughs> between people. But for the most part, there's, I've never seen anything like that ever happen. And you know, as far as the the upgraded security stuff that I was talking about, right. like it doesn't have to be the local um, PD. It doesn't have to be the county SWAT team, right? Like. I let the free market do its job, right? Seriously, like I guarantee you that if you made it so that um, so that upgraded security had to be provided for all of these events over a certain size, that you would have private organizations step up to take on that responsibility. And to tell you what, I would really like it if Blackwater was at any ever at every NFL event. Yeah. But right. you know what the thing is? I don't think I, I agree with you somewhat on what you're saying. Um, I don't think they want to do it. You know, no, they I don't think, want to do it. Yeah, they, 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 no, that's not that's not the issue um, or that is the issue. They don't want to positively affect change. Yeah, because um, let's think about Vegas, for example. You know how in Vegas they just knocked down. What was the big casinos that they knocked down? They're going to turn it into a convention center. It's been there for a long. I don't know. It wasn't the was it the Rio? There was a there's an old casino that's like I think it was the last of the original or going back to the early days casinos that came down in Vegas and before they knocked it down it was vacant for a long time when we were there um, or at least when I was there I think for SEMA and then before that I was there for another show and even when we were there the year before for Shot Show right that this hotel was still up and I know for a fact I know guys that uh, work in Las Vegas in the police department, they were training in these hotels. Do you know that? So the hotels were closed and they were in there doing like room to room stuff. And they were in there shooting and practicing and training in response to these things. So what the hell happened to all of that? If you have this number of people out on the streets and you know you're in Las Vegas where people come to from all over the world, this was a domestic, to me, was a domestic uh, case of terrorism but Las Vegas is wide open for terrorism, right? Oh yeah, they get so many, it's a world destination. Yeah, so why why is this going on? Las Vegas has rules that not, do you know that when when you're there in, in the actual hotels and stuff like that, because they're casinos, you cannot, you cannot carry, even if you have, like right now the Florida um, CCW reciprocates to Vegas, but you can't carry. Even the police officers are not supposed to carry. In a casino so even in this case the police now I, if a police officer was carrying and he had a handgun on him i'm pretty sure he couldn't do anything about the guy that was up on the 32nd floor 
you know, but these got like, you know, if you're following the rules there, you can't fight back. And even I think the security guard, I don't think the security guard that somehow interrupted him either at the beginning or the very early part of what's going on was armed. You definitely can't fight back. So how is this, how is Las Vegas prepared for this stuff? They're not to the point that you're making. They're not prepared. They're a huge open target that people go to from all over the world, people who have a lot of money, right? All kinds of people congregating in Las Vegas, huge numbers of people, the traffic and all that kind of stuff. And I I think this blows it wide open that they really weren't super ready for anything like this to happen. Oh, no, they weren't prepared at all. And that's kind of what I was alluding to with you know my idea of – uh, instantaneous reciprocal force to um, to because you have to look at it every mass sh just about every mass shooting that we've seen in the country um, when as soon as they're met with with responsive force they typically off themselves um, it happened in the last several mm -hmm. uh, where the, where as soon as a as soon as a a um, a good guy with a gun uh, sent a bullet their way or showed themselves they pretty much took their own life. Um, because these people are cowards. Like they, this, they thrive on the on the the success. They can't handle. They're they're shitty people in general, and they can't handle um, the adversity of of somebody taking that success from them. So they sure. typically they typically end it themselves. So yeah, and they're not the looking faster, for a fair fight. No, all. no, they're not. They're right. as soon as, so the faster that you can put bullets on their location the faster they do that. Yeah. The well, fewer I mean, people die. I think, I think to the point that you were making, I'm wondering just why Vegas wasn't better prepared or more prepared for this, especially knowing these kinds of concerts are going down and you have this mass amount of groups. I mean, it's wide open, man. It is. I mean, all you have to do is walk down the, all you have to do is walk down the street in Vegas and you, and you see like, wow, I mean, the tactically minded person, like, I don't even want to be outside in Vegas. Like, it just yeah. looks like a horrible place to be. Yeah, like, it feels ooh. like it could go bad at any time. Yeah, like, there's just nowhere you can go with the way the structures yeah. are built. Like, yeah. and then I, I, the other thing that I heard is like, um, the other thing that kind of really pissed me off um, that some of the leftists were saying about this thing is like, well, what about all the people on the ground that had guns that could, you know, fire back at this guy? Well, it goes back to the four rules of cardinal firearm safety. Um, you can't shoot at a window from a lower position to an upper position because those bullets go through things, right? Yeah. So you can't shoot at a dude. If you're on the ground, you can't shoot at a dude. And you don't even know what you're shooting at. Like, why would you start shooting up in the air? I mean, what are you going to do with a handgun, for example, and figure out how are you going to... Well, I mean... No, I mean, you could make the, I mean, now the distance, if you were at the concert, like there's probably no way that you could shoot that distance unless you're like Jerry Mikjelek or something like that. Um, you know, it's very, it's a long shot with a handgun, but even if you're on the ground right next to the building, right, you can't make that shot because the angle is so high. It, you, the, they go places after they leave your, your bore. Mm -hmm. So if you miss your mark, even if you hit your mark, it can still go through that, that assailant and injure people on the floors above that. Yeah, so. there were other people in the rooms next to him. You know, yeah. so yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. And you know, I mean, it was a four hundred meter shot or more. You know, I don't know the exact number on it, but it was at least four hundred yards away, right? And like, like I said, there are very few uh, people that can do that. You know, yeah, very well. Um, somebody in the comments says five hundred yards uphill. It actually doesn't work that way. It's gravity exposure. So it's a, it's a trigonometry, right? That's the whole, you know, the, the high angle shooting concept goes both ways. It's only the, it's not the hypotenuse, which yeah. is the try the flight of the bullet. Yeah. But this is where you get to see the full nerdery. Yeah. So, so he's so, a total nerd, right? Here. So like if this is, you lost me at hypotenuse trapezoidal. No. So look, if this is your triangle, right. And this is your bullet flight path, right. That is the, and this is your angle of inflection, the angle at which that you're shooting from the ground from, from level, which is this, the ground, right? This, this doesn't actually matter. What matters is this distance because that's your gravity exposure. Now, what this does matter, this distance does matter is this is your wind exposure. So if you're talking about shooting from like a high angle or something like that, 
this is now what matters, the distance, the lateral distance the, the bullet actually travels. So from your position elevated up here to the, to the ground, that is, that doesn't matter. That's, that's calculated or the, the distance the bullet actually travels across the ground is the distance you use for your calculation for gravity exposure. The bullet actual flight path is your wind exposure. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, lots of factors. I know. I mean, people are, people's heads are exploding right now. Curtis. Sorry, sorry, guys. Like, sorry, guys. What the hell? There's a big beefy dude talking trigonometry to me. Sorry, <laughs> I, I should have. You know, I have a napkin here. I system does it. not system does not compute. <laughs> I should have just drawn it instead of trying to use my fingers. But no, it makes um, sense. I mean, there's too many factors. First of all, you don't even know what the hell you're shooting at, right? No, yeah, I you mean, don't even know. Like, if you're 400 yards away, can you even see the dude? But that's what makes it amazing that these. These guys knew something was going on now obviously the guy shot out the windows i was wondering what they no, know, no, you know. no 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 he used a hammer okay so he, to bust the windows okay this so is he, how and this, this is again why a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense because this dude's a fucking idiot right that's why i think that i mean they're saying this dude wasn't crazy this dude was crazy right and a, and an idiot at the same time he's holding a rifle and he chooses to take the time to thank God he chose to take the time to use a hammer to break the window before he started shooting. Right. Mm -hmm. Just. Yeah. So maybe that's what drew the security guards. We don't even know at this point, we don't know why there was one security guard going up there or, you know, but it's just, I think, I think, you know what Vegas, I, I get the same feeling I get in Las Vegas. The only other place I've had that feeling is in Washington, DC. And I, I agree. I don't know if you've ever been to DC, but it's a weird place. Like you have these couple of square blocks that's all multi-million dollar homes and like the most powerful people in America, if not the world, you know, and then you just go <laughs> like one block from that area and it's the ghetto, it's the hood. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, if you look at, if you just walk the street and watch and just look up above you, right it's it, the street is a killing field yeah. right like it just it just it, it, like if you if you think in this way that is not the place you want to be so typically if you see me walking through vegas i'm the dude who cuts through all the hotels it's faster that way anyway mm -hmm. so yeah and so it makes me it, it makes me uneasy for that reason I, I don't like going to vegas i wish they would do all these things in another place i know we can get deep into all of that i just i don't i don't ever feel secure there like i like i don't i want to see a transition before i get in the hood or before i get in some place where like i feel my security drastically change from one thing to another <laughs> you know um but i i think that the route that these guys are going to say well wh how we're going to solve this problem from happening in las vegas is we're going to make all these laws even if you can get those laws, you can't stop it, man. There's just too many things. People go on helicopter rides. If someone takes over a helicopter, it's on. Yeah. You know? If someone takes a plane, there's all these small planes getting off from the airport. I typically stay down by the airport when I'm there. There's all these little tiny planes there at the airport, bigger, whatever. You know, if someone uses a plane, it's over. Use a big massive truck or something like that. I, I cannot if they put if they start putting up massive uh, concrete barricades in Vegas, traffic is done. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's already <laughs> terrible as it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're talking about I don't know if people realize this about Las Vegas. Las Vegas was crazy already. Now Las Vegas has a hockey team. They've got a football team moving in. <laughs> you know. There's a lot of craziness going on in Las Vegas right now. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think it's solvable, and it's definitely not solvable by gun control. No, not at all. You know, so uh, and that's and that's the premise that we always go after when you know when we we know this that this is the truth, but really the bottom line is the progressives don't care about solving the problem at all. They want their control. They don't like that you have guns. They don't like that you have modifiable semi-automatic rifles and handguns. Yeah. They want to take them, and they're using this opportunity, using this tragedy as an opportunity to get them from you.
Yeah, and one last thing I want to put this. I know Lola's been telling me that as usual, me and you are just running our mouths like um, some yeah, little girls right. here. I just it's put something in the chat that I want you to look at, and I'm going to put this in the because we and we have a lot of people in our chat right now. So like, if it was slowing down and there was no one in the chat and it was just me and you, I would say you know we might as well go private on this. But I want you guys to look at this thing I just posted in the chat. I'm going to read it to you because I think this is indicative of a lot of what's going on with with us fighting against gun control, that there's a lot of infighting going on. I've been telling people this for a long time, and I think we have to like start exposing a lot of the infighting, not, not the trivial stuff. The trivial things, really, really no one gives a shit about that. But where we're ideologically inside of people who are supposed to be pro-gun fighting against each other. So there's this article in The Truth About Guns on Marion Hammer who, um, it says Marion Hammer is the president of United Sportsmen of Florida. She's also a past president of the National Rifle Association and currently an NRA lobbyist, okay? And she sent this letter that The Truth About Guns is talking about and the title, the title of the article is Marion Hammer, NRA never wanted legal machine guns. Uh, bump fire stocks. So, you know, um, she's she's going through this whole thing and talking about it. And, I, and I've told people before that the NRA is against a lot of this stuff. But here, I'm going to scroll down here to, um, I'm gonna, I want to scroll down to the bottom. You guys can read that whole article and see what she's talking about. But here's the, the interesting thing to me. And I just want to bring this up. And she says, additionally, there are Trojan horse members, quote unquote, who are deliberately misinterpreting what the NRA has said, just like having an R after your name doesn't make you a conservative Republican. Having an NRA membership card doesn't make you an honest NRA member. 100%, you can see it all the time. Yeah, but she's talking about, but what she's talking about here, if you really go through and read this, is that she's talking about how there's people like us who are Trojan horses in the NRA and we're not agreeing with them and we're causing problems for the NRA you know, by talking out about the nonsense that they're doing or by trying to take over stuff. You know, this, this is this is how I feel about that, about this particular thing. You guys well, can tell me what you think about it, you know. So what I would say, and you know, we started off this conversation very heavy on um, mm -hmm. um, beating up on the NRA, right? Yeah. Um, and we presented both sides of the argument, right? right. And um, at this point in time, my personal opinion is, um, right now, in my opinion, opinion it doesn't matter what the fuck the nfa the nra said right right now we have legislation to defeat yeah so um everybody well, I, is every, hang on everybody is bitching about the nra and i spent the beginning of the show bitching about the nra they're right. wrong in what they said right and they we need to work from within to fix that um after we get past this right now the enemy of our enemy is our friend, all right? Even if we don't like them very much, uh, we have to defeat this legislation or we won't have anything to defend with the NRA in the future. No, so I, I, yeah, think I see where you're coming from. I think, I think, I think that, the, that people who are like the friends of our friends are really our enemies. Yeah and, yeah, and I'm not trying to beat up on them, but even there's articles that I could pull up here showing the NSSF, which puts on SHOT Show, and Sammy calling for, you know, review of bump fire stocks and all that kind of stuff. And and that's the thing. I think none of that helps us push our thing across when the big organizations that put on these shows and, and is supposed to be fighting for our rights are out there saying that these things shouldn't exist. Right. 100%. I agree with that. Um, those people, we need to send the message to those people to shut their fucking mouths um, because they need to get on board with the... Um, with the program because we've got some stuff coming down the line that is really bad. This legislation that has been proposed is terrible. It will end, it will lead to the end of the second amendment as we know it. And it's very important that we defeat it. We can sort out who said what and who said this wrong or whatever, when yeah. we get that done. Uh, right now we need to get together and we need to stop trying to eat our own because right now we got people trying to kill us from the outside. We need to start pointing it all back out the other side. Yeah. If so what? So what do you think? I mean, you know, first of all, do you think we have a good shot here to to uh, to kill this legislation? And how do you think we go about it? Uh, we do. If we act, we need to put down the pitchforks 
against the NRA. We need to get behind all of the organizations that are going to sue and lobby against this legislation. And we have to galvan or we have to gather ourselves together to do rallies. We need to write and call our representatives. And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean just an email, guys. I mean ink and stamp, pick up the telephone. Yeah. Bring their phones yeah. off the hook. Also go on their social media because all go their asses on. are on social media. Go on their social media, blow them up big time, right? They need to know that this is not cool and yeah. that you are paying attention to it. And every single person that you know that has any kind of values that are uh, close to yours needs to do the same thing because this, and you need to be doing your part as informed citizens to educate all of your friends that are like, oh, it's just bump stocks, right? No, it's not just bump stocks. It's everything. So you need to go out there and educate people who don't know any better as well. And that's how we beat this thing. But it's going to take substantial sums of money um, from lobbyist groups like the GOA, like um, like the NRA. I yeah. mean, it's, I mean, that's the. I mean, I I know that that's not the popular thing to say, but uh, they are going to be instrumental in defeating this. Because unless you're going to sit there and fork over millions of dollars to fight this in the courts. Um, On the pro-gun side, do we have a Bloomberg type dude who's just like got money? No. That he can make it rain? We don't. It's no, us. we don't. No, yeah. we don't. And we have organizations and that's why they exist. And you have to support those. You have to go out there, even though it's not the popular opinion to do right now. Um, I think that, um, see, us gun people, we get really whipped up. Um, and we, you see it in the comment sections of any video uh, that uh, says anything controversial about guns or even just like the Glock versus 1911 or AR versus AK thing, 762 by 39, 300 blackout, 556, like all that sort of stuff. If you look at those arguments, they're really, really stupid. And we end up hating on each other when if we just took a fraction of that energy that we're putting against each other and applied it to the bigger problem, which is all the people trying to get at us from the inside, we'd have none of these problems. How many gun owners are there in the United States? There's yeah. more than the 5 million people that, that are on the NRA book. Yeah, it's, sure it's, 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 it's roughly four times that. Yeah. So um, if you had, if you just take that number, if you say 20 million people all wrote Congress all at once, what do you think would happen? They would they would start um, they would pay the back in line they yeah would pay the fuck attention wouldn't yeah. they right? yeah absolutely I yeah I agree with you I think it's probably somewhere between twenty and fifty million people um, I agree with the NRA as well the ones who are committed to give money it's probably a percentage of that right we see it doing what we do on social media mm -hmm. that we might you might have a million people that follow you on social media but maybe only a hundred thousand people. Who are going to get out there and do things and i agree with you man we have like i might only have fifty thousand. you might have one hundred and fifty thousand. this guy might have a half a million someone might have a couple million if we get together even if that's like you know 10 million or something we just get a percentage of that to to start like you know even taking the things that we do if it's too much work for you let's say you're trying to go after these guys on their social media because it means a lot to them right they're vain just like the rest of us they check their phones all the time to see what their Facebook status is and all that kind of stuff, just like we do. You know, just to, if, if you if it's too much work for you to directly do things, I say share things that other people have done to their social media. 100 percent. So the videos that um, Hank put out, I put out, uh, Tim put out. Not really. Um, uh, I can go down the line. Uh, there's other uh, Mr. Gunzinger put one out. Yankee Marshall yeah. put one out. Uh, Twenty two uh, Plinkster. Twenty two Plinkster put one out. Like go on down the line. I'm sure that we forgot somebody there. Yeah, um, and that's not deliberate. <laughs> and that's not deliberate at all, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. You take those videos. Take one that you like, right? If you can only do one, if you only have time to do one, take one that you like and post it on your Facebook page, right? And maybe. Maybe only five people see it, right? Who cares? That's five more people yeah, than zero you, than you potentially informed. If every single person that cared about that cared about this did that, right? The problem would be solved. Yeah. I think the reason like people were asking earlier, like, why is this coming up now and it didn't come up before? Because now we're fucking complacent. 
That's what right. happened. We think like, oh, we got we got Obama. He's in the White House. We got Republicans. It's all good. Nothing's ever going to happen. People keep telling me that, man. Yeah. Even the even like gun world. guys are telling me, oh, we're, it's not going to happen. They're not going to enact anything. And I was like, you're you're shitting me, right? Yeah. You really yeah. believe you can't wake up t- overnight? Like while we're talking about this, overnight these guys can get together, make a deal, push it through the Senate, push it through Congress, the Senate. Next thing you know, there's a bill on the president's desk. Someone's wheeling and dealing with him. Hey, we're going to give you a victory. Yeah, we're going to give you your. OK, let me let me put this like this. What is what do you what do you think is more important to Trump? Right. People saying, oh, Trump won't sign. Trump won't sign. And, you know, Don Jr. won't let him like Don Jr. Ain't the fucking president of the United States. No, right? man. And so who does me, Trump tell, listen to? Yeah, let me tell, let me ask you a question. Let me guess, ask you a question. If you if he got his funding for his border wall, do you think that he would that he would sign the bump stock wall? Or Fuck yeah. think, if, if if some sh- some stuff that he was talking about during the campaign. Yeah. So if he, if he, let's go down the line. If he gets his border wall, do you think that he would that he would sign this bill that we're talking about? That's so terrible. I guarantee you he would. If you give him health care, I guarantee you he would. If you give him his tax cuts, I guarantee you he would. Right. All those are issues that he ran on. He spoke to the NRA once. Even if they go in there and promise him the media will back off for a couple of months, he'd do it. I guarantee you he'd do it. <laughs> yeah. Right? So that's the thing. We have to keep up the pressure. We have to let uh, we have to let these guys know. Ultimately, I agree with you on that. I think there's a limp. There's a probably a limit of time. I'm not like I'm not for letting anyone off the hook. I will always keep the pressure up on people. I think we have to like, you You know, you, internally, we have to do that. We make, you know, make sure that we're all giving out one message. But ultimately, the people who are really scary here are the politicians that we give money to. They get into office, they get power. And then they forget why they're there and who put them there and why they have wanna, a Republican next to their name, for example. I just want to remind everybody, the last time we had a gun uh, push on guns this big was in 1986 when the Hughes Amendment was approved by a voice vote. Mm-hmm. It was added last minute yeah. to the thing by a voice vote. Instantaneously, all new manufacturing machine guns were, ex- were kicked off. Uh, were were made illegal uh, to be put on the. I'm losing my words here. You couldn't make new machine guns. Yeah, they don't it, have to do what you think they have to do, man. These guys have created so many uh, means and ways and uh, you know protocol and stuff like that to get around it, where they're never going to get in trouble for it. So, like, I, I think the thing is, is that I think we should keep up the pressure, and I don't think anyone should relax. We should really just keep this thing going. Don't t- don't take it easy because you know even if you get rid of this one, they're going to still be out there plotting, looking for a reason to do the next one. There's four, aren't there? Four bills that are being proposed right now. Four separate bills, I believe. That's what the count is um, up to. Could be, yes. Uh, I know that there's. I, I heard. I know the names of at least two of them, right? Yeah. But I heard that, like I read somewhere that there were four separate bills. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the biggest one that's getting to us is the one that was pushed forward by Republicans, two of which are in the state of Florida. Right. Um, those and you guys, um, you guys, we were talking earlier about like you don't have time to do X, Y or Z or whatever. Get on those dudes, social media and blow it up like that should be priority one. Those um, yeah. Tim called them turncoats. I call them traitors. Right. Um, those, those guys. Their feed on Instagram or Twitter should yeah. look like a bit like it should. On look my video, bad. I I listed their social media. So on the video that I did, um, I think it was yesterday. I did a separate video about this. That's twenty four minutes. In the description, I listed their social media. I put the links. And then you should also, if you again, I'm giving heavy emphasis on this. After you've done that in your conversation or in your letter with your your representative you should say we are actively campaigning against this individual that did this do we need to add you to the list right say it respectfully right use your words right yeah take some time and write it you don't want to come off as an asshole Okay, I think that's a good point. Also, please don't level threats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah, we don't. We don't want to level. We don't want to go there. But 
you do have the ultimate threat to them, which is your vote. Yeah, but be right. careful. I'm just telling you, don't give these guys a reason to have some police officers show up yeah, and don't do that. try to deprive you of your gun rights just because yeah. you're you you want to you know show how badass you are. It's not you, worth it. You can't work within the system if you get your rights revoked, right? If you get your if you get a disability on your gun rights, you can't work within the system. So yeah. be a good model citizen and everything. Yeah, DF2 can, dot says is tar and feather a threat. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. That's bad, <laughs> right? Um, any any battery would be considered a threat. Um, but there are ways to make, um, there are ways to say it so that, because um, what really matters to them is their job, right? Because yeah. that's where they derive all their power. That's how they get super rich while they're in office. If you take them out of that position, then they no longer have the means by which to continue yeah. to expand their influence. Just say you're not going to support them politically. Your friends yeah. and family will not support them. I think some people have like some little short form letters. Yeah, Just do a little bit of work and you'll find it. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're out there. You can find them. You can do a respectful. Now, don't get me wrong. A form letter, you want to, does, you want to write it out. Right, a handwritten letter it means more than a printed letter with your signature at the bottom of it. Right, mm -hmm. so um, it, read the form letters. Yeah. Right. Don't print the form letter. Read it. Get an idea how they said it, and then compose it yeah. yourself. And also call. I think when we were looking into calls, and when we were calling, people were like, "Oh, we're not getting a lot of calls." You know, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeah. Now that so, could be something that they're just saying to discourage people, but yeah. they need to so, feel it. Yeah, you like no joke. If you if you are calling your senator's office and the busy signal isn't get is you aren't getting a busy signal, then you need to call again, right? So we need to keep the pressure up on these people because that's how we send the message. Like if they get if they have a really bad day and their secretary can't get anything done because the phone's ringing off the hook, right? We want them to unplug that phone. That's how bad we want it to get. Yeah, um, because you want them to it, not look, be able to look at their uh, phone screen. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, so I don't know if you guys do this, but like on my phone screen, I have these notifications that pop up, Yeah, right? <laughs> like continuously, right? Yeah. We want that to look like that for their Twitter feed, right? So they just see it <laughs> as it, as it happens. So yeah, and that's the only way we do it. That's the only okay. way we can do it. Um, I don't want to beat a dead horse. So Lola's reminding we've been going for a while. I think we, we did three hours again already. <laughs> did we already? Oh, geez. <laughs> I don't know, man. It goes so fast. It's fun. It does. I it think does. it's good. Okay, let me give you a chance. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys have anything else to say here. Let's give uh, Curtis a chance to hit us up with what he's up to, you know, what projects and all that events you have coming up. <sighs> Uh, stuff that we got, got, got coming up. I, I showed you guys the bag project. Um, we got a couple guns that are in for review right now that we um, that we can't really talk about because a couple of them are on NDA. Um, let me think. Are you um, doing any more events, or is this at the end of your event schedule until Shot Show? Until sh let me think about that question for a second. I'm pretty sure that I'm done. Um, yeah. I'm, oh no. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be going to the NFA review shoot in December. Oh, that's right. Yeah. NFA, um, that's, that's, that's in Florida. Yeah, it's in Florida. And right about December, I need a trip to Florida anyway, because it's cold here. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm probably going to go to that one. There's a few things that need to get worked out before I can like officially commit to that one. But that one, I definitely, I really like his events. So I, I, I will do my best to make it to that one. Um, I believe I'm also going ice fishing in December. Um, let me think. Uh, but that should be the only two major trips that I have. Ken Helmers wants to know if you're playing with your Henrys. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. He says, at VSO Gun Channel, are you guys playing with your Henrys? So I don't know if that, do you have any Henry rifles? I do. I have a, several Henry rifles. I actually use oh. a, I use a, I have a video out on uh, the Henry. Um, we just did their, a few of their 22s, yeah. but. Um, I like Henry rifle. That's an incredibly pro second amendment. 
uh, company. I, I do, although they didn't invite me to their thousand man shoot. They so, did. Oh. No, yeah, you know yeah. what? I think a lot of people got left out of that. Hopefully, next time. Um, I, I told them next time they need to give, a, a, like, first of all, a bigger venue and, and get more people involved in it. Um, but so. I will tell you that my one of my favorite rifles is their, um, I, when I started working with them, they were like, So, what do you want? What, what guns are you interested in? And I said, The Henry All Weather. The all weather forty five seventy, oh, please. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got one of those. Well, so in the state of Ohio, we can only hunt with uh, a select list of pistol caliber carbine or pistol caliber rifles. Mm -hmm. um, so um, forty five seventy happens to be on the list, um, and it's yeah. awesome, right? Um, it is the rifle to have. Uh, before they enacted that two years ago, we had to either use a muzzleloader, a bow, or a slug gun plugged at three. Yeah. So, yeah, you know what? I think Henry makes good stuff. I would like the fact that they're so pro second amendment and, I um, and I think that, you know, you guys, there's going to be, I don't know if I, I, if I'm allowed to spill the beans, it's not something I know from Henry directly because they don't, they don't tell me this kind of stuff, but I heard that they're coming out with some uh, even cooler stuff soon. I, um, yeah, they are. <laughs> right um yeah <laughs> now, um, i don't want to mess anything up for them and then have a whole bunch of people so i'm not going to say anything but i know that they're trying to listen to us in terms of what we want from them um one of the things i asked them to do was start threading the rifles uh, i'm a big silencer guy um i'm a silencer shop pro staffer i do a lot of cans uh mm -hmm. through them so uh, I'm really big. Actually, they have a threaded 22 that's coming, and I actually made sure I brought a couple cans over to test it at the show floor to see if it was going to fit and everything and how it's going to work. It? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, we, we totally. I, I actually had oh. one in my pocket. Yeah, but Brian um, says side loading gate, question mark, question mark, question uh, mark. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. We cannot confirm or deny. Or deny, yes. <laughs> um, however, um, somebody did ask where I hunt in Ohio. Um, the family farm is located in eastern Ohio. Um, so that's kind of the – I can't give you the town or anything like that, but um, – Eastern Ohio is the uh, is kind of where we are. I'm so close to West Virginia that I use the Wheeling FedEx to send guns back to to um, to manufacturers. Yeah. So, so there's there's an idea. How about that? I can see a bunch of people stalking you at that FedEx on that one. Uh, try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's good. So there's you. You've got some things coming out. Um, I'm not sure when you're gonna. Come back on next. Uh, that's all Lola's department, but we do enjoy having you on, man. Well, I always have a good time when on yeah. uh, when I'm on here. I am never bored. I feel like this is a just an awesome show. And when you started doing it, I was like, oh man, that looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. It is, man. Um, we did. We went. I don't think we started exactly at seven, <laughs> but it's ten oh four already. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we and didn't Lola start right like giving up trying to tell me she came over and wrote two hours Then she put a line under it. Then she came and put another line Now she's like um, giving up putting lines <laughs> um, a, a Mud girl came by and dropped off my my dinner Did um, you eat just, it? No, uh, no, it's still sitting there and yeah. she just like she just like set it there and put napkins on top of it Yeah, right. so awesome. right. tell people what social media and other things you have going on like patreon and stuff like that real quick um, before I so do my... Just about everywhere. We are VSO gun channel or the VSO gun channel. We are on YouTube full 30 Facebook Instagram um, I have a reddit um, that is called trigger pullers and basically the uh, the premise of that is I watch a lot of gun video uh, mm -hmm. Because I do that's kind of actually how I do my market research a lot. Um, I don't have time to read a whole lot I will read articles on things that uh, my friends wrote that I trust uh, But I basically don't consume any print media other than the stuff that my friends write So that's how I do my 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 research if I'm getting if I'm doing a review on a video or if I'm doing a review on a product um, and like Mr. Guns and Gear tested it for six months um, before I finish my video. I'm going to make my video about it, but after I finish it, uh, pretty much, I'm going to go back and watch his before I yeah. publish it to make sure I didn't screw something up. Uh, right. So okay. <laughs> that's kind of how I, that's kind of how I do that. But because I consume so much of it, I kind of, I post that stuff on our subreddit, 
uh, so that um, if I basically watched it and said that it's good, uh, like this oh. is a good video, why wouldn't I post it for other people to consume? Yeah. You're right? good because typically, like I used to look at a lot of, like I used to look at a lot of that stuff before I did my video or while we we're putting it together, and then I was like, man, I'm just gonna start putting my video out and then look at stuff. So then a lot of times I get like messages like, you idiot, you should have looked at my video. <laughs> well, so the, the biggest problem that I see, and I see this across the internet all the time in the like digital creator space, um, you don't, you want to make your video so that it's pretty much done before you do that because mm -hmm. otherwise they all start to look the same. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that. No one wants yeah. that. Nobody wants that. So. It's like the dude that goes to, well, I don't know. This might be another tangent, but the people who go to SHOT Show, and then come up with like three, four hundred videos of Shot Show. <laughs> no, no, no. Of all no. the same thing. It's crazy. No, no. no, no. Yeah. Now, so what I do, my process is I complete all my testing, I complete 95% of my video. Like it's like basically may have a few texts here and there that need to be tweaked, but it's ready to hit go. Right. And then I'll be like, all right, well, let's see who else did this thing. Right. And it's like, oh, oh, Such did one or Hank did one or Mike did one or Tim did one. You know, maybe I should look at that. Oh, they broke that thing that I broke. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that sort of thing. You know, that's kind yeah. of how we how we leverage that. And because I consume so much of it, I put it over there. Um, and then the other page that we have going on is obviously our Patreon page. So, um, you know, I think I have a Twitter account, too, but it auto posts for me. I have followers over there. I don't even. I don't okay. even know. So right? you're probably putting a like heavy focus on the Patreon people, right? Obviously, because they get so, support. Um, you. Yeah, our Patreon page actually is um, some people have done this, but um, our level one is very, very simple. You're in all the giveaways no matter what, right? So if we're giving away a rifle, you know, this this month or whatever, like we're actually giving away a 50 cal at the end of the year. If you're on our level, level one Patreon, you're automatically entered. Right. Okay. Like, it's, it's simple. If, That's cool. if, if you enter because of the 50 cal thing and I give away a cleaning kit a month from now, you're automatically entered. Right. It's just a continuous thing. It just got too clumsy to run giveaways. So we started doing it that way. Um, level two um, is exclusive content. So this is stuff that gets posted specifically for those people um, that want to see more stuff and get first looks at stuff. So like I might get a silencer in, for review and testing, but the video may not publish for a month, right? But I'm gonna go out to the range and film a short video and be like, hey guys, check this out. This is here, you see it in a few months, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll shoot it and you know, that sort of stuff. So. Um, cool, yeah, that's good. That sort of stuff. I'm thinking about some more levels um, there, maybe some shirts or something like that that uh, you were discussing, right? Yeah. Um, you know, some shirt giveaways and stuff like that. Um, Did Lola send you that info from Forge from Freedom? Um, she may have. I haven't been. I put my phone on silent because oh, it was blowing up. Okay. Um, so I'm no, sure that she, I'm sure that she'll, she'll get it to me. Yeah, you probably but, have to scroll back through a lot of things. But and you can also look them up, by the way, and get in touch with them and just tell them that you know me. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what that looks like. If you guys have ideas for Patreon that you would like to see us do, tell me about it. Right. Yeah. If it's a really great idea, then we'll do it. Right. Uh, yeah. if it's something that holds value to you guys. Then we definitely want to do it. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good thing. Like maybe when you're at events and people are going to be there, even SHOT Show or maybe NRA um, or other events like that, and they're going to be there, you can have like something where those people can actually hang out with you. Yeah. That would be something yeah. that I would do. I would totally do that. Um, uh, definitely since like NRA is more public, you know, um, it open to the public, that would be really applicable. Right, because a lot of us, a larger percentage of my subscribers would go to that event than, like, say, the shot show. Um, um, I will tell you that we're working on a project right now with a friend of mine to have a facility that we can open to the public for training type stuff. Nice for people uh, who want to come shoot and get the the, the BS experience. It'll, it'll have force on force capabilities. So if you really hate my guts and you want to show up and shoot me with sim rounds. You could try. I know some people that would pay good money just to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that's in the works, right? Um, it's still in its infant stages, but we're hoping to accomplish that within the next, you know, year or so. So, um, it's a slow go, right? Uh, right now, we use our range for our filming capabilities as well as some Leo applications. 
And um, it's just not something that we can, because of that, we can't really open to. Yeah, there's lots um, of liability and risk. Yeah, lots of liability and that sort of stuff, and we can't um, do that. But this other space that we're developing will be specifically for that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, people so, always ask me, like, can they come shoot with me? And the problem is it's like my own private range, and it's not a good idea. I would love to do it with you guys. And as VSO is saying, I'm you know trying to work that out where you guys can come shoot with me somewhere. But it can't be there, obviously. There's just too much risk involved. Now, here we go. If you have a venue, right, and you want to put together like a shooting event, right, and like, I don't know, we'll, I'll take a cut of the door or something. I don't know what it looks like. The administrative stuff we can hash out later. I'm yeah. all for that kind of stuff. Like if it promotes the Second Amendment and it's safe, I'm, I'm game. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Or make a big no donation to the uh, Patreon. Yeah, something something like that. You know, like we like that doesn't matter, right? But I'm always trying to provide value for my for my subscribers, right? I'm trying to trying to make the video better, or trying to make um, you know make the Patreon perks better, or something like that. Um, like I'm always like a good example uh, of this is like if you're a business, if you're a manufacturer or something, you cannot get in touch with me through the Facebook Messenger. I will ignore you. I don't care if you get on there and offer me 10 grand right now, I'll ignore you. Um, because it says, and then you'll get a form response automatically from the Facebook page. Um, don't don't go over there and offer me 10 grand. Don't test me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but if you go over there, uh, if, you, if you go over there and send a message, you'll get a form response that basically says shorthand, uh, if you're a manufacturer, send an email here, right? We don't want to hear from you here, right? This is for subscribers only, right? And that goes right here, right? So. Absolutely. Awesome. So make sure you guys support him on Patreon. It's Patreon slash uh, VSO gun channel. Yep. There you go. Okay. Awesome. There you go. All right. So I want to, you know, although if I don't stop this now, we're never going to stop. No, we're not. So. I want to thank everyone that's been hanging out with us in the chat. We still have a ton of people in here. Really appreciate you guys. I'm sure we didn't get to everyone's comment and questions and all that kind of stuff, but we really appreciate you hanging in there with us. And, and we hope we answered some of your things and we got some of this frustration worked out that we're all feeling. I want to remind you guys to go out there and uh, uh, fight for the Second Amendment, you know, support our Second Amendment rights. Um, I, want to, I want to thank the people that support us on Patreon. We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. Of course, I want to thank those that sponsor the channel. That is Walter Keller from Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, Andrews Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. Big Daddy Guns. I've got some cool stuff coming out from Big Daddy Guns um, that I want to show you guys. And a quick thing for anyone out there who is looking for for the um, for the binary triggers, Big Daddy Guns in the store. They've got like five of those in the store. So. It's going to be sold out tomorrow. Yes. Call them up if you're looking for it. I know that it's tough for uh, people to find those because of everything going on. So, so call um, up the yeah, call up the store. Look it up. Big Daddy Guns, Gainesville. Call them up. Tell them I sent you. And uh, so what's, um, what's up? So do you think it could be four and like Big Daddy Guns could like. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, you know. Address in the chat. Because <laughs> uh, I can't find one anywhere either. Um, I just want to say, guys, um, as always, it was supremely fun to be here. I had a really awesome time. I am worked up. Like, I'm sweating. I drank an entire thing because this show was awesome. And I had a really great, fun time uh, talking to you, Hank, as well as interacting with the people in the chat. Um, I Sorry, I can't do both at once. Um, but uh, I, I, as always, I really appreciate the invite. It was oh, you're welcome. Absolutely welcome. And you will be back on again because I just have fun. Time just go goes by. All right. We're going to cut it off now. And uh, we're out of here. Thanks, everyone. Peace. We are out of here. Bye-bye.